Hello, and you're listening to You Still Going On About That with myself, Rob Israel, and Joseph K. And you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, Google Play, CastBox, and Podbeam. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, you know, share it. You know, tell your mom about it. And uh, while you're at it, we also have a Facebook page. You still going on about that? Again, like it, join it, comment, share it, share it. and uh, thank you and enjoy. I'm Rob Israel. I'm Joseph K. And you still going on about that? All right. All cool. right. Uh, so how's it going, man? Good. Good. Yeah. 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 Uh, I guess we're gonna cut straight to the chase here. Uh, Did you see recently uh, Bill Nye, the science guy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, who I guess really isn't a legit scientist. Is that is true? he not? I don't know. He he means well either way. Uh, he's a good guy. I'm yeah. like, he's in the good guy camp. Maybe if he's not a science guy, he should be Bill Nye, the good guy. Or something. Yeah, he'd be like regardless a, a third tier Avenger. If, yeah, if, or maybe second. Let's right, make him a second tier. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's a. Uh, Falcon's buddy. <laughs> is right. that really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Falcon. Falcon's yes. buddy. Yeah. Uh, he said that the earth is on fire, grow up. Yeah. Uh, well, he said a lot of things. I, well, I remember but it was a recent, this was recent. Uh, he, like, posted a thing basically saying, like, because they, they announced on the news recently that, or it wasn't on the news at all. None of it was on the news. Right. I found out this from, like, Reddit or something where basically the earth is, like, Oh, what if it was like the carb carbon? Oh yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I'm saying it. CO two levels or whatever. Yeah, yeah the co- are like prehistoric level or something ridiculous, like recorded. Like we have not seen this yes. in forever. Like, well, it hit that, like 85 degrees in like near the North Pole. 80, 85 degrees, mm-hmm. and That's they said that the, the CO two levels were were at the highest they had ever been recorded. Right. So yeah. I think that. You know, uh, yeah, man, it's fucked. You know, good thing I heard it was this guy. <laughs> okay, uh, as you know, he's making a train. Is he a eccentric industrialist? <laughs> well, usually all people who have a train are eccentric industrialists. Yeah, and he was able to make a track it. around the whole world. Crazy, huh? Right. That's, sure? That's the craziest part. Is he has a track that he's been building around the whole world? Yep, I see where you're going with he this. Might be according to some people. A grown-up Charlie Bart Bucket. Char- uh, yes, Charlie Bucket of the Charlie and Chuckle Factory. Yes, but that's probably it's some conjecture. Fun, yeah, some fun YouTube thing. <laughs> um, what was his name again? So that's with a W, though. It's, you know, I knew right when you said that. I was like, I'm blanking on it. It's not Wilford. Wilford, sure. Um, I don't think that's his only name. <laughs> right, but usually, not. all strange and centric industrious do. Or whatever I just said, I probably said that yes. butchered that word. Uh, that build a track around the planet, yeah, for reasons of unknown origin. Well, I, are usually have one name. He was prescient, is what I I understand. They said that everyone thought he was a fool, yet he knew that this uh, chemical that we would be using to save the Earth would actually destroy it. What? Wait, what, what, when did this it's, happen? It's, we're talking uh, clearly Snowpiercer, which is a, a great. <laughs> Wait, are we talking about real life now, or are we talking no, about... No, we're shifting to the movie. Was this a bit? Was this a bit? A well, poorly like, paced when, bit? <laughs> when you first started talking Bill Nye, I was like, oh, cool, we'll do like a little five, ten minute Bill Nye discussion there. Yeah. But then I was like, oh, I see where you're going with this, because yeah. it's a climate... It starts out as a climate change type yes. of deal. It is a it is a climate, global warming, whatever you want to call it, uh, end of the world, apocalypse. It uh, is. Out of control of man, or man-made... Out of, but not being able to control the results. Right. Uh, it's the old, it's a, a, tie, a tale as old well, as time. Well, some <laughs> scientists would say, you know, the ones that Trump reads, you oh, know, he's man. not for science. Well, He says that it's a Chinese hoax. The yes. The warning's a Chinese hoax. Right. Well, and this is a South Korean film, so Ooh, that tracks. More uh, propaganda <laughs> from the far east. From the far east. Oh, yeah. I see. So, okay, All so. All right. Well, Snow, <laughs> Snowpiercer, <laughs> and um, <laughs> Snowpiercer is a great movie. Yeah, Snowpiercer is a great movie. Global and climate change is real. And climate, yeah, un- undoubtedly. So the 
just to get their snow pierces from like 2013. That sounds before. about right. It's a, yeah. yeah, it's a South Korean movie. Yep. The director, do you know the director's name? It's Bong something. Okay, we'll just call him Bong. Yes, and uh, he also did the host. Yeah, the host, and he also did a new uh, one that was on Netflix recently. And yes, it totally was very forgot. disturbing. The one with the cow? Yes. The cow monster? Do you remember the name of that one? No, I think it was... Was was that a... Sure. Yeah. Well, The Host was a great movie. I saw that when it came out, um, and I I liked it a whole lot. It was a really well done... It wasn't like Godzilla, but it was a Godzilla-ish... Well, the monster's not that big. No, no. And he said that... What's funny is the director said that... Because the monster is like... It gets bigger and smaller throughout the movie, and he said he did that on purpose... As like kind of like a little bit of a ode to the original King Kong movie. Oh, okay. Because if you look at the animatronics, they took a 1932 King Kong. I could be yeah. wrong on the date. You could right with that. Fay Ray. Yes, yes, the original one. Yeah. Uh, the King. They use different models, and if you watch the movie King Kong, the it models are not size. consistent. Oh, okay. No, yeah. yeah, he changes in size, and he his face. He, it's not consistent. Like yeah, it's it, and then sometimes he's like a big animatronic thing, which is kind of well, cool. Thinking back on it now, yeah, I'm him for on the, the Empire State Building, clearly he would have been just gargantuan to, to. Well, yeah, they they filmed that on top of a bank. Sure, um, yeah, it wasn't a real monkey either. So oh, puppy. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that, right, that so, wait, King Kong was a documentary. Right? Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, but this one, okay. Look. So he, but he meant he did that on purpose. He wanted his monster to be. Inconsistent fluid. throughout the movie, like some movie in some scenes he would appear bigger, some scenes he would appear smaller, and it was kind of like a little like callback to the original King Kong movie. Well, I, the host was great, and it was like one of those kind of rare uh, movies where it kind of lived up to the hype. I thought, yeah. And okay, so Snowpiercer, it came out around twenty thirteen, somewhere yeah. in that ballpark. And I, I like to consider, even though it's not a Elseworld or what if story. Of a of Captain America, yes, in a post-apocalyptic future, right? It it stars Chris Evans, who plays Captain America. Yes, I think his name's Curtis in the movie. It is C, oh, right? Captain C. Well, and this Curtis. is kind of like that arc in Captain America where, where he, he went ate babies. To, and well, then. no, no, <laughs> where he went to um, the the alternate planet. Uh, well, he's C, been, there's the, been several yes. stories of like. Um, if you ever read uh, Earth X, yeah, like Alex yeah, yeah. Ross series, Marvel, and like that was a cool depiction of Captain America in the future. He's like, right, right. He looks like almost looks like a caveman. He's like wearing a shredded up. Oh costume. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got an A carved into his head. Yeah, it's super weird. Um, well, you could. You I always could. like. I always like to see. I, so whenever I watch Snowpiercer, I always like to see it. Like I always pick, pretend like this is an right, alternate is a, reality Captain America movie. Even though it's not. The character well, do you is not Captain America in the any way. Tilda whatsoever. Swinton character is an alternate no, ancient one. Because that movie came out way before right. she was in uh and she looks so different. Yeah. She, the characters have no like Right, they're very, very little relation. Yeah, very little relation. Uh yeah. Okay. I no, I don't see it that way. Well, <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. When Snowpiercer first came out uh, like on available. I, I don't think. Uh, I think I finally. I think I caught it on Netflix. I yes, like it was limited release here. Um, I think the it's like one of those unfortunate movies. It's weird because the movie is considered foreign, even though it's got like more American actors. It's like ninety percent American actors. Yeah, I mean, Brit- there's American some British. parts in it that have Korean in it because the the one of the main yep. stars, but. But very little, <laughs> yeah. You know, very, you, very little, and you know, and it's interacted. Well, it feels it feels like a foreign film. I and guess I know that's it reminds me of Brazil a little bit, and yep. like City of Lost Children, like that kind of look where you see like uh, just people living in like scummy, yeah. like environments. Well, and, it's funny because it reminded me also of Delicatessen. Mm. Which was, yeah. sh- it was which is Terry the Gilliam. same. Uh, well, that's the French director. Yeah, Terry Gilliam didn't have anything to do with it, but when they released it in the states, it was a it was pr- uh, offered by Terry. They attached his name to it in some oh, way. Really? Yeah, that like makes sense. Back presented the time. Was, by yeah, because he was doing all kinds of. It, it fit his look. Yes, it yeah. was presented by Terry Gilliam. Yeah, even though the he had direct, that's the director who ended up doing like Amelie and Alien. Yeah, Alien Four that uh, one. 
Right. Yeah, I don't I forget know his, his name. name. Okay, we're, but, it's not about him. So no, no. But del- it, it, this movie reminded me all at once of Delicatessen and um, the Hunger Games, Mannequin Two, and Mannequin Two. No, and uh, the video game Bioshock. It reminded me of a video game in general. Like, uh, yeah, the way the movie paces when you go to each cart is like another right. level. And it yeah. reminded me of the like a punching game, uh, like. Double Dragon or like I don't know if you remember like Kung Fu. Yep. It was a simple game. I think it was from Nintendo and I remember the music was like do 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 and you just like you have guys just come at you and you just hit them and you and the whole goal is to just get across one floor, walk up the stairs, get up the next and you have to like jump and dodge. It was from like nineteen eighty five. It was like Well I love that game. You're and it reminded me so much of that video game. It does, and there's even like a name for on, like for that type of video game, it's called like on rails, where yeah. you don't have, and we, we're kind of jumping way ahead, but but we where you don't have any autonomy, yeah. And I think that's like the a side major, scroller is another yeah. name for it, yeah. And the, the, it's weird, like if you play a big modern video game, like uh, like um, Skyrim or Grand Theft Auto Four, open world, open world, you can go anywhere, yeah. do anything. But a lot of video games. Uh, and, and that's kind of like this. You don't have any autonomy. Yeah. You're marching. Some of them, you don't even get to move. They they march you. Yeah, there's a lot of games like that now too. Like um, one of the well, it's not new. I mean, I remember getting it, it was like Mario Jump, which was oh like yeah a, yeah, where you jump, but the game the board moves right regardless if you want to or not. Yeah, you you and and it's funny because this movie is about people that have kind of lost well free I mean, will. Okay, and, so yeah, let's talk, I know we were dancing around yes. in the beginning and making a bad jokes in the beginning and uh, okay no. so the plot of the film is this is the future yep I think it's like 2046 sure. or something like that it's the train has been running for 17 years or 18 yeah. years 17 because the the Captain America character yeah. was <laughs> on earth for 17 years yep. and on the train for 17 yeah. years and uh, his friend you find out later yes uh, well we'll get to that right uh, so you have like the Earth's over. Everyone's dead. Well, they tried to fix. Everyone froze. Yeah, they tried to fix global warming. Yep. By releasing a chemical in the Will air. And Wilford knew. Right, and uh, and it backfired and froze everything. And the opening. I don't know if you caught this, but the opening line is like uh, the year is such and such. We fired this, and then everything became extinct. And it says literally like everything became extinct. And I'm like, well. I guess that's it. But then they're like, oh, except these people on a train. Like They got on the train before. Sure. And this, I mean, it's not discussed and it's fine because it's yeah. far-fetched. It's, it is. It's ridiculous it, when you think about it. I mean, a track around the planet. Oh, it's, it's, it's stupid I mean, as hell. It doesn't make any sense. Like, how do you make a... I guess it doesn't really go around the planet. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It does. Yeah. They it, show it does it? Yeah. I guess. They show a picture and I should have paused it because I watched it uh, the other night. And... It goes. It circum. It goes around the planet, and it hits certain cities on certain holidays. Yeah, and it takes one year precisely to right. travel the world. Uh, it's it. Yeah. So I mean, it's insane because it's like the Pacific Ocean's pretty big. Yeah, I mean, I guess That's you could like the all you got to do is get over the and, and look. If everything froze. Yeah, but you, that means you yeah, have, to, you'd build have to build the track, track after, after it, it It doesn't matter. Sure, like, this yeah. is where you just got a right. suspension of disbelief. Well, that's You're already on a train that just yeah. rides around. My my it's, brother it's, told me about this after he saw it on Netflix. And he's like, you got to watch this movie. It's amazing. And I read the, the caption. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way I'm watching this. It sounds, <laughs> wow, that sounds awesome. <laughs> well, it, was, it. it was like... People hammer fight on train in future was like the caption. Like, oh, that that's the, not a good caption. Yeah, yeah and so it could be anything. It wasn't until much later I actually gave it a watch, and then you brought it, and, and I rewatched it again over the last few days. Yeah. So, but but that, that it's the future. They're on the train, and well, that okay, okay, so this is like the last bit of humanity, and basically all yes, life. Right. This is it's a giant train. Uh, it's kind of funny the movie, like when you're watching it, because the movie involved it begins. In the shitty part, yep, the tail section where all the poor people are. Yes. All the so I guess they had different classes get on, and then there were people who snuck on. Yes, and I guess they were nice enough to just cram them in the back. I yeah. guess you hear in the beginning, you're told that basically it's there was like a thousand of them back there. 
Yeah. And they basically killed each other and started eating each other. Yes. Uh, to survive because they weren't given any food or any nourishment or anything. Like basically, they were just locked into these two like two carts in the back. Right. And uh, they just kind of let nature take its course. And uh, everyone's crammed back there. It, it's kind of interesting. You see like a society there. Yeah. It's a train, but I feel like every car. <laughs> it's, I get like Berenstain Bears syndrome. <laughs> when I was a kid, I remember looking at a, a Berenstain Bears book. Okay. And it used to drive me insane. Um, where, and I was a little kid here. Sure. No, this isn't my reason. <laughs> it still bothers me. Where hey. they live in a treehouse. Yeah, sure. And they would show the outside of the treehouse. Right. And it was like a tree and with a house. Yeah. And then they would show the inside of the house and it was. Big. Gargantuan, right? Like, like, like Doctor Who's TARDIS. Kind of, yeah. yes. Yeah, I mean, I was going to bring up that, but I don't know. <laughs> Bears, Bears is funnier. Uh, right, right. But yes, it's literally like, well, TARDIS is huge. I mean, it's yeah. like, but. Well, the Brady Carter Bunch house was like that too, where it was just. It, every cart is different. Yeah. Every cart, like some carts on the train look just like a train cart. Right. And then there's some carts that are like. Super wide. And yeah, stuff. it's really bizarre. Like, they just have a bigger, it's just a. And, and, like, it's funny how they talk about everybody's crammed in the back, but it looks like a wider space. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's pretty nuts. So it is. You find out, so you find out the rules in the beginning of the train, like, these people can't leave. Right. Uh, you're introduced to Chris Evans' character. Yes. Yeah. Uh, John Hurt, who recently passed away. Yeah, John Hurt is... Uh, he's, like, the name? leader of the group. Yes, and uh, a very old person. Yeah, and he's got, like, a missing hand, and I think he's missing a foot, too. Yeah. I think he has, like, a hook. Right. And uh, you find out, like, uh, throughout the movie that, like, he basically sacrificed his hand. Like, yeah. Basically let him eat his hand so he wouldn't eat a, a, baby. a, a certain baby. Yes. Who happens to be, like, his friend. Right. It's, like young it's super messed up. Yeah, the whole I mean, movie is messed up. I mean, like, honestly, when you watch this movie, it's like humanity's dead, and you and you watch the film, and you're like, almost think, like, maybe we should be dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like, there's no hope in this movie. Yeah, it, it is. It's a, it's, I don't know, it's, it's so weird, because it works super well as a big, dumb, fun Right, it's action violence, movie. and there's all kinds of, yeah. like... Crazy action it's, scenes. Yeah, it's very fast moving. It and moves very fast. Quick, and I'm, I, I know it's a train, but it, yeah. it does. It's <laughs> very little slowdown. But you could enjoy it. I think, like, look, I think, like, a, I don't know, a, a very young kid could enjoy it just strictly for the visceral thrill of the fight scenes and the action scenes and this, that, whatever. But as an adult or as, like, a, 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 like a contemplative exercise... It's incredibly bleak and yeah. it's super intellectual, and yeah. you and and there's like except for the part about the track going around the world. Well, yeah, except for that. Well, well, even that, like, like, I, I mean, I, I'm probably going pretty far afield here, but it's like a giant circle, yeah. and it's always going, and yep. it never stops, and it's circular, and it's like that. That's kind of works into how futile it is to try to change anything because it's just a big circle. Yeah. You know, I mean, and every I don't know, it, and yeah. So, so there's like well, it the, works the reality is, it's like. like you find, you know, these guys are living like shit or whatever, but they have a community, which I found interesting. They still have a community yep. in the back, even though you find it obviously had a hideous origin to get to that point. Yes. A lot of people had to die. Yeah. To, to have even some kind of community, but it's still getting, it's crowded back there. People are like, there's no space. Uh, they're fed these like gross looking jelly yeah. and squares. Yeah. Like a, like a, um, protein bars. Protein bars. Call, right? Yeah. Then, so I guess they're plotting. They've been plotting for a while. Yes. When are they going to, and they're under the assumption that they've been following it. They, there's no more bullets left. Right. Well, you learn, like you learn so many rules right away that the story, the director does a great job kind of world building. You know exactly the society there yep. is, you know, their goals. They need to get to the front of the train. Yep. You know that they've been, well, they want to take the water. Yeah. Their goal is to get to the water part. Right, because they, the they water, believe once they get the water, they'll control. They, they control yeah. the train because that is kind of important. Water, yeah, water. yeah, but they <laughs> and they they steadfastly believe this. Yeah, and um, and the the people from the front keep coming back and they steal children. 
Okay, so you're introduced to them, and then you see, uh, yeah, you see some lady come in the back. They grab a woman. Uh, they're, gra- they're looking at kids. Yep. They're measuring the kids. You don't know what they're using the kids for. They take them in the back. You hear like a little line, like Wilford likes children. Yeah, it's just this like. Ugh. Well, you know, I, that's the first reaction yeah. anyone this, was, like. This you. isn't what happened, but I assumed they were being ground up into those protein bars. That's like I didn't the think. First thing uh, I yeah, I guess I didn't know what the, to think. I mean, I. That would make sense. It, this horrible movie. I mean, right. yeah, that would be almost like a, when they do find out the protein bars are. Yeah. It's, well, they find it's almost like a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, it's, it's not Timmy. It's just <laughs> all. It's just bugs and roaches and like, right. I yeah. Mean, it's kind of crazy. Well, okay. So it's, it's the amount of it's amazing how many bugs are on that. Yeah. That, that train. train. Yeah. Well, they find, you find out so quickly the rules and like they, they've been planning this revolution and. Uh, Chris, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and you're introduced to Tilda Swinton's character. Yes. And she's this very crazy-looking lady. She reminds me totally of the the crazy-looking lady in Hunger Games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same and type it, of did character. Did this come out before or after Hunger Games? I must have came out. I think it came out after. It came out after, one. I'll bet. I, I don't think it... No. There's no, nothing in common. There's nothing... That, I, think, I hate the character from Hunger Games. This is a... This is yeah. a real character. It is. It, it reminded me of that character, though. Yeah. But it's it's a. I, I watched a YouTube interview where they interviewed Tilda Swinton, and she said that that character was just supposed to be a politician, and how yeah. slimy politicians yeah. are. And uh, well, she's just she's basically telling him like, uh, what did she say? Like, oh, someone throws a shoe at her or something Ooh. like that, and then they yeah. like they put a thing on a guy's arm and they stick it outside. Yeah. And they his freeze arm, his arm. Yeah. They crack it off and it's pretty crazy. It's brutal. Yeah. It's fucking brutal. His arm freezes. Like it counts seven minutes. I guess it yeah. takes seven minutes to freeze to death in this world or something like that. Right. Uh, but she's telling on about how they're the foot. You don't, yeah. push, you wouldn't put a shoe on your head. Right. She's the head. And you guys are the shoe. And you guys are the shoe. She's like, be a shoe. She's like, yeah, it's like pol- it is politics in some way because she is like basically trying to put them in their place. Yeah, you know, don't try to revolt. You know, know well, your she- place, be a shoe. Yeah, uh, this is how we keep the train going. If you if you try to act like a hat, you're not a head. You're you're a foot. Right. You know? But it's so crazy. Like, look, there's a whole bunch going on. First of all, she looks bananas. She's got obviously crazy fake teeth. Yeah, and I remember I told you that the, the guy who made the Freddie Mercury fake teeth. Yeah. It's the same fake teeth. The go-to guy for fake teeth. Yeah. Made hers. And she's, Ridiculous fake teeth. Yes. And she's mm-hmm. and she's talking about this religious symbolism. She's talking about how the engine is sacred. And Wilford is divine. Yeah, Wilford's divine. Yeah. And you're like, is she a... Is she like a religious... Is she a minister? Because they call her a minister. Yeah. But it's a political thing. And um, she's just a upper head and she... Clearly runs the security. Yes, yeah. they have a lot of security on this train. Right, um, it's pretty insane. Okay, so they do. So she leaves, and then they eventually, I guess, they find a way to get through. They have to like roll these barrels through. Yeah, uh, to push their way through because the doors open. Which is it's funny now that you're saying that it's a, totally a video game. Yeah, thing. They like and they have like a guy who can do like. Who, who clearly yeah. would have been a uh, what they call that? Where they jump from buildings, like like parkour, parkour. Or yeah, guy. yeah, like a parkour guy. Yeah, uh, and he has like tattoos and it, it, right. He uses those tattoos later to like. But uh, it is super video game esque. Oh, totally yeah. video game esque, and they push their way through. People die, right? And, but they're getting their way through. They get into like I guess the first thing they break through is one security cart, yep. and then they end up like in the another cart where they find out where the food is. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's, it's gra- they've been eating these ground up cockroaches. But that, and the guy's like, I eat them too. The guy who makes them, he's pretty crazy. That well, guy. yeah, because Chris Evans gets up there and he apparently knew this guy. And I was a little unclear on this, but yeah, I guess like, he was originally from them. And the thing is, you, Oh, that was the other thing too. You find out is like, yeah, these people in the back are poor, yeah. but they're not like, you know, they, they go back and they use these people. Like one of them was like, uh, I'm looking for a violinist. And the guy's right. like, I was in the Philharmonic. Yeah. And, and then he tries and to get his, his wife, wife. wife too. And supposedly his wife was better supposedly or whatever. And they, right. just, they take him to the front too. So they, you know, they use these people in the back whenever they need something. Well, they're like livestock. I mean, they're, they're, well, they're just peons. They're yeah. like, you know, like 
society, you know, they're there to be used. They're there to be had, you know. It's a definite, definite symbolic of society, you know. It's like, you know, how people make it in life. You know, sometimes you just get lucky if one of the elites comes down and yeah. grabs you. And right, says, and all of a sudden you're, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's just opportunity arrives. and Well, it's weird because these people are definitely, they're, they're they don't have a viable way to earn their way out of the tail section. They're not getting out of the tail no, section. they're out. not. And you may, they may like say, oh, well, on this day you can have like this treat or whatever, you know, extra roach bars for everyone, but they're never getting out of there. Yeah. You know, it's, they're, they're, it, the doors are locked literally and figuratively. They'll never advance to the next cart. Right. And the, the carts get, I mean, it's tough to tell at first, but they get gradually better as the, the they boy do advance. until the end. Yeah, until the end. Um, right. So, and, and some of the carts are ridiculous. Like some of them are just like, that's what the carts for. Yeah. And like, well, which one are you talking about? Uh, well, particular? okay. So I guess they they know they have to free a guy. Yeah, they have to free a um, someone who was like a, an engineer or something. He developed. He designed the security system on the train. Yeah. He was like the original designer. And they have like a prison, and the prison's kind of odd. It's like they. Basically, put these people in drawers yeah. and lock them in, and I guess they are put to sleep. Well, I don't know if they were all like this, but the one they fought, find was in like a drug-induced coma, and they they wake him up by waving the chronol, the yeah, drug. chronol, which is like a yeah, yeah they call it a drug. Yeah, and they they wake him up, and he immediately wakes up. And he pulls out these, like, he has two Mar- Marlboro lights left, and someone's like, they've been extinct for 20 years. Like, everything's been extinct. They yeah. get word or whatever. Uh, and then he, uh, they said, if you get us through these, the, the train cars, we'll give you, like, two rocks of chronol for every car right. you get us through. And he has, I guess, uh... He's got a daughter. Well, she's not... Really mention as his daughter. You don't really know much when you meet him. He's, you thinking that he might be like kind of fucking her. You don't know. Uh, like yeah. I don't think they don't he really explain no, that that's his kid. And you just think he's like a drug addict asshole. Like you don't realize. What I he's thought been he doing said this time. is my daughter. I I don't remember. Yeah. Well, anyway, he he. She doesn't look like his daughter. You know she. Well, she could be. I mean, she's supposed to be like seventeen. She's not. Yeah. You know, he, he looked younger to me, but I, no, no, he. Yeah, looked, I didn't think yeah. so. I thought he was. He could have been like. Well, then things get pretty fucked up pretty quickly because something happens that he agrees to help them. And then almost immediately they go through the next gate and the, the daughter, the girl says, like, shut the door. He's coming or something like that. And then moments later, you see someone coming and you find out quickly that she's clairvoyant or she's psychic or something. Okay. And Chris Evans, even in like a scene or two later, kind of pulls her aside and says, are you clairvoyant? Can you see shit before it happens? Yeah. And she, I forget, she doesn't give like a super clear answer, but up until that point, I mean, obviously you're, when you're on like a world spanning train, it's not a realistic movie, but it wasn't like fantastical, you know, in the sense that like, well, I supernatural, think the whole movie is, it is pretty yeah. fantastical. Like think about it. Um, so I guess the next cart is when they get into the big fight. Yes. And like, they just have these guys with like hatchets. Yeah. They're like, Literally, like bludgeoning each other with yeah. hatchets, and, and it's a crazy scene. But the best part is, remember when they're like ten, nine, eight? Yeah, they have like Happy New Year, and it's like, well, what a way to celebrate! Yeah, because everybody's still, everyone is on this train. It's like they don't have anywhere else to go. No, no, you're not going anywhere. You're on this train. You have no choice. So if you're in the back, you're in the front, you're in the middle. It doesn't matter how great you have it. You still are stuck there. Yeah. It, it, and everybody there... So it's like super bizarre. It's like that scene when they all sing Happy New Year, even though they've been hacking at each other. Yeah. Shit of each other. Half of them are dead already. And... Well, there's even one scene where like a dying guy is like, Happy New Year. Yeah. Like yeah, a yeah, blood yeah, coming that, out of him. That, that was yeah. a very like... To me, that reminded me of like Terry Gilliam for some yeah, reason. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, which is weird because I'm like... I don't know if I... Seen anything like that from a Terry Gilliam movie? But it just reminded me. Yeah, it just reminded me of like it was super bizarre. Uh, and then they're like, "Oh, we're about to go to a tunnel." Oh, and yep. Tilda Swinton's character's there, and she's smiling. She's yeah. like, "Hee hee hee!" Right, right. Tunnel, and they all have uh, black light glasses or yeah, whatever, yeah. so no one could see. But then I guess 
Uh, they go through a tunnel. John Hurt's character comes with flame torches. Yeah, you yeah. See the little kid light it. And right. It's like again, it's like ridiculous. Like it is. lights it and they're running, and they're able to win the fight. And then you find out like uh, like holes start getting you know shot through. Yeah. And like a snowflake comes in, and then you see while everyone's fighting though the guy the conduct the engineer guy or the security yeah, yeah. designer guy with right the clairvoyant girl whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's like, look, you know, and again, he just comes off like he's this like aloof drug addict guy. You well, know? he's looking out the window. He's looking out the window for yeah. a reason. He's trying to show something. Right. And what I never caught what he was trying to show. I mean, well, they reveal it later. I mean, it doesn't even matter. We're not retelling the whole story. Yeah, yeah. So the whole thing is he's looking out the window because he every year they pass the same spot. And his theory is that because there's a story being told that. People try to escape years ago, right. and they froze to death. And they and they, they even, even show say, their corpses. They pass yeah. by it, and they kind of like Tilda Swinton's character thing or whatever. Kind of like laughs at yeah. it. Like you see these the fools, rebellion of the seven. Yeah, or something. and they and you see them like they slowly just kind of not slowly, but you see them walking away and freezing to death. Yeah, and um, <laughs> his theory is that it's starting to warm up a little bit. Yeah. It, the fro the, the initial free, it's still freezing out. Oh yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's not, people could survive if you get like right. warm enough, you'll find shelter, you'll find a way to survive. He's like, yeah, if we just people, get off this train, life's coming back. Fine. Cause and he says that he would look down and he spotted an airplane and he says he's passed it. And I think he said every couple of years he passes it, which I guess, again, you're on this train what right. else you gonna fucking do? Yeah. So if you see something weird and you, you pass and you're gonna keep, you know where where it is to look again. Uh, he sees a, a tail of a plane that was clearly crashed or whatever, buried in snow. And it's getting more visible. You see, yeah, the plane is starting to show itself. So his theory is that we can we're not stuck in this train. We could survive. So Chris Evans' character's goal is to. Just take over the train with the water. Right. His goal is to blow the fuck up and get off the and train. Get off the train. We yeah. don't need to be on this train anymore. Yeah. Um, we need, you know. And, and theoretically, that's the only logical or rational choice. Is to get know? off the train. Right. Because Chris Evans, I mean, like, that's uh, it's like the classic pirate victory. You've won. Now what, what have you won? Yeah. You've won the same. Well, and that thing is, and you find out later, too, when he runs into Wilford again. Yes. And, yeah. You know, it's like everything is put in its place. Because the only way this train's going to run, and and it's an ecosystem. The train yeah. is an ecosystem. As they're being, you know, they do... So in that scene where they're fighting, they do overcome. They do beat everyone. They they take Tilda Swinton's character prisoner. Yes. And she kind of guides them through the train a little bit. She get you know, they go to the atrium. They go through, go through a classroom. Well, that, that's later. Well, yeah, yeah. They go through a... Uh, they get sushi. Yeah, And she's yeah. like, we only have sushi twice a year. You know, don't think like, which is kind of weird. Remember when the scene they come in with the fish? What was up with that? I don't again stylize yeah. styling over. Uh, it made no sense. Like, why would they? They were like they wanted to bloody the axes so that yeah. I guess they would be slicker or something. I guess I don't they, know. No, I think if they if they used fish guts, which is like has right. oil in it, it would make the axes like hack quicker. Uh, like I think no, I, I think yeah, that's, I mean, it was like it was like they were oiling up the axes. But it, I just found it, like, and again, it was it's a weird. visual. It's a yeah. stylized visual, like I, gut you like a fish. I mean, because that's yeah. basically what was going on, right? But I think that's kind of the theory. Like they, they were like oiling up the axes, so like they're hacking people. I don't know. Yeah, like, the slide out. Of, I don't well, know. it was weird because like you had as you were watching it, you wonder like the, there are these people that have been in the tail section, and as they kind of progress through the train, they. Probably see a lot of things they've never seen. I bet you they've never seen. Or a haven't fish. seen in seventeen yeah. years. Right, like Chris Evans probably remembers a fish vaguely. Yeah. But then some of the younger guy, people, his friend, right. train, who they call a train baby. Yeah, he's never, never seen a fish. Never right? seen. And yeah, a lot of them have never seen sunlight. You know, right. they get to because that point. Because the one thing is, that's right. Because the cart in the back don't have windows. Right. They're just like it's storage just like carts. Ca- yeah, cattle carts. Cattle carts. Yeah. yeah, they really are, and they don't have windows. Mm-hmm. Um, so it isn't, yeah, you don't get to even look out. So, yeah, that's that part when that little, that weird artist guy. I've seen yeah, that guy yeah. in several movies. He's got, like, little hands. Right. <laughs> uh, he, he's been in several movies, that guy. I saw him, like, Sin City and a couple of Oh, things. okay, cool. Um, 
he yeah he like the light flashes and he's just like whoa yeah they're like, all yeah. looking at it and I mean there there are so many great actors I guess we're kind of jumping all over the place here but Octavia Spencer was in yep. it yeah that's before she got big yes yeah well she was in it uh, Tilda Swinton Chris uh, Evans John Harris and Harris and then like a, a lot of the I mean, a couple of people I recognized I yeah. can't name but like you've seen him in things right there's the um. There was the, the teacher I had seen. In the oh, her. Uh, uh, she's in Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, she was in American Horror Story recently. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Jill something maybe is it? Allison Pill is the okay. So yeah, that's the teacher. So as they go through, you know, she's like acting like she's their pri- she's the prisoner, Till Swin's character. Yeah, and but she's clearly obviously setting them up. Right. Uh, the next scene they go to is literally just a classroom. Yeah, it's a very... It's a cart. And again, it's super bizarre. It doesn't make any sense. It's not functional. Like, so this cart is just a kid's room. I guess these kids never leave the room. I have no idea. Yeah. Like, it's a classroom for kids. Uh, it is like a series of set pieces. Every... Um, yeah, and each... Like I said, that's why it's like a video game. So each each train cart is a board. It, each cart... Each, tonally, each scene is different. Based right, on the right. cart. And, like, what happens and what kind of characters they run into. Yeah. And... You know, it's funny, too, because, like, you see the, the, the way people who, I guess, pay to be on the train. Right. They're just, like, background players. Like, they don't interact. Like, they just move, they pass them by. Or they're like, ew. Like, they don't want to be bothered yeah. or whatever. It, it's kind of interesting. I'm like, you know, is their life any good either? I suppose one of them reading a newspaper. I'm like... I, it, yeah, I, that does sound right. Which is ridiculous because, like, what, do they have a printing press car or, or they something? Must or must just yeah. be reading an old-ass newspaper. It, yeah. I don't know. Uh, so they go into a classroom car. Yeah, Allison Pills, the teacher. Right. It's super bizarre. She's on a piano. They're singing like a Wilford song. Yes. They play a video, so you get to learn more about the train. That's yeah. That's when you with the the train setup is kind of revealed, and like, like the little kids, like it's very like uh, fascist. Like the kids yeah. are being taught to like. Uh, repeat things and like and they're taught that the tail section people are lazy yep and they don't want to work yeah and it's which like, is a very which is classic yeah yeah you know that's a way to uh, down you know attack people right like different minorities she's basically saying they're classes. not human you know right yeah you dehumanize yeah. your enemy I mean right. that's a that's kind of what you do you know to get like people to you know it's a tactic they use like uh, after nine eleven, they would oh yeah, they would yeah. say things like, uh, especially would drum up to the Iraq War, even though it had nothing to do with it. They would get these young people or whatever to like say they attacked you. They live in caves, right? And they, right. And that was bullshit. They didn't live in caves. They had society there. Oh yeah, they yeah. had streets. They had restaurants. They, they had, did. Yeah, they had museums that had some of the oldest information and in, like in man. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That stuff that's gone forever. Uh, so, but when you demonize your enemy, I mean, it's a tactic. They've been doing it. Yeah, for, they've been doing it. Yeah, old, oldest time. And yeah. you teach, and you teaching a bunch of children to do it. You're raising a bunch of shitty kids, basically. Well, that's kind of the. There's also that. There's like. There's so much in there that's like circular, and the lack of choice and things being static. Like the train's always going to go round and round and round, and the people in the tail section are always going to be in the tail section, and the kids are going to get born and then grow up and then assume their roles. They're not going to choose. But I mean, roles. like, you know, when you're watching this movie and you're like, okay, they're on this train and it's like a society, but like, where do you go? I mean, like, what are you going to do? Like, yeah, it, 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 this thing can only sustain itself for so long. Right. Well, you it's find not that out too. Yeah. It's not sustainable. I mean, and it doesn't deserve to be sustainable. I mean, it's, a, it, the whole thing is it's like the last dying now, uh, last dying, Whatever uh, yeah, yeah. humanity, and, and they're on this train. It's like they're not giving up. It's like we should be dead. You know, it's like we're not. Right. It's like the. It's like we're outliving. Yeah, it's almost it, unnatural what they're doing. It is know? unnatural. Yeah. Um, and, and it's funny too because it's caused by unnatural, like by introducing a chemical into yeah. the air, like create this. So it was like everything is like unnatural events. You know, global warming. Right. It's like. Adding, uh, you know, they say like, uh, if when humanity dies, uh, Earth will be like, thanks for the plastic, right? Yeah, because <laughs> they'll outlive us. We'll be our gener- generations will be dead generations, and that it's plastic crazy. Bo- water I bottle mean, will still be around. Go, I, and I kept thinking this as I was rewatching the movie. I watched it 
uh, in two parts. I watched uh, the first half. I started each night very, very late, yeah. and I watched the first half, and then I watched and But all this time, it's funny that you started out with the Bill Nye thing. I was thinking, like... Well, that's clearly, because it was recent. It was like the other day. Yeah, that. but clearly this isn't going to happen. This isn't an, an ecology movie or a global warming movie. I mean, this is more about, like, class struggle and social situations. Well, it does sh- I think it, it, it does show, you know, the movie, like, where they are and everything is a, a consequences to... Oh, yeah. Not giving a shit about the world. You're right, right. And, and now you're stuck in a fucking train. It's and definitely it, there. And Wilford, who... You know, Ed Harris, we yeah. learned Ed Harris later, he's aware and he has, you know, he's a dick, but he's, you know, he's like, it's funny, he's like, when you meet him, he's like the Wizard of Oz. It, yeah, oh, that's another great example. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, it is Wizard so of Oz. So the other thing, like we say, so online is that Wilford's really Charlie Bucket. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the guy's name? Um, Rhino Stew. Rhino Stew on, on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Has Washington. a great theory that this is a sequel to Charlie and the yeah, Chocolate Yeah, someone told I did a drawing a couple of years ago of the Till Swinton character. Right. Minister Monroe or something. Yeah, I, yeah. And I posted it on Instagram. And I think this was after I said, let's talk about this movie. Right. And somebody commented and said, you need to watch Wonka Piercer. Yes. On YouTube. And I was like, what? So I watched it. It's like 10 minutes long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally worth it. He brings up all, like, so basically Till Swinton's character is Veruca Salt. Yep. And when you see her, and when you see... Now, this is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the 70s movie. Right, not yes. Not the book. Not no, the, the Gene one. Wilder. The giant yes. Gene Wilder. And, and like, because he says, like, you see the W's everywhere, so you think of the Wonka, you know. Oh, yeah, a lot of it tracks. Because he, he's, in the end, the Willy Wonka, and it's also how Will, the Willy Wonka, the structure, he says that he thinks Snowpiercer is a sequel to Willy, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie right. and the Chocolate Factory. Yes. And because uh, even like how each stage of the factory, uh, yeah, and you would get the kids, and you would lose a kid, kind of like as you would lose people as you go to each yep. train. And he said, "What did he say?" He said, "Oh, God, the woman that was sizing the uh, the children yeah. is." This is where it got stupid. Was Augustus Gloop's like daughter or something? <laughs> because she like eats the she gets hit in the head with the shoe. Yes, and she. Starts eating the blood because they have an insatiable appetite. Uh, yeah. And I love it too because he shows a clip, and I remember this from the Challenge Track Factory, it always made me crack up. Oh. It was when you're introduced to Augustus Gloop's family. Yeah. They're just sitting there eating. Oh, they're just nonstop right, eating. Yeah. They're, and they put a mic in front of the dad, <laughs> and he, eat, he literally <laughs> eats the mic head off the mic. And it's so stupid. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, I was in a band, and I accidentally bang the mic against me. Yeah, I don't recommend chewing the mic yeah, head off. Just, no. just letting you guys know. I just want to bring a little bring it, bring a little down to earth. Perspective. That's what I bring it down to earth. Don't, well, don't eat the mic head about how hungry and fat you are. It's funny because like you would say... No, I mean, I'm sorry. Plus size yeah, positive that's right. uh, well, mic- you, microphone head you, eaters. Gloop-esque. <laughs> you, you had said... Um, you, I saw your picture of the uh, Tilda Swinton character yeah. on, on um That's an old one. I did it like four right. years ago. And, uh, and so I looked at that, and then earlier that day, I had Googled a whole bunch of stuff. And coincidentally, I went down a rabbit hole where I discovered that the same person who made the Freddie Mercury teeth made the yeah. Tilda Swinton teeth. Yep. And then I, I watched a bunch of interviews with the director and a couple of the actors, and I was just I was trying to figure out like why wasn't this movie bigger in in the U.S. They yeah, said like Harvey Feinstein, Harvey, God damn it, poor Harvey, Harvey Feinstein, Feinstein. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein. You know what's funny? The whole Harvey Weinstein. Um, when all that was really going on like last year, huh. people kept on calling him Harvey Firestein, and Harvey Firestein was like, why is everybody, <laughs> why is everybody calling, I'm not Harvey Weinstein, I'm Harvey Firestein. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta call my mother in Atlanta. <laughs> well, That's an Independence Day reference. I watched um, all these videos, and then, just out of sheer coincidence, I stumbled across the Wonka Piercer video, Yeah, and I watched it, and then I had, got, I think, I don't know what happened, but I, I wound up back on your Instagram page and I saw that someone had commented on that artwork yeah. uh, with a Wonka Piercer comment. And I was like, yep, I 100% buy that. Yeah. I don't literally buy it. I don't yeah. buy I any. Mean, str- it's not a sequel. It's just, there are some things, you know, it's like, uh, what is it? Uh, 
Is this true, Nat Pink Floyd with the Wizard of Oz? Oh, yeah, I've done that. I, I think that's sheer coincidence. And I think that's the, the, the mental dynamic behind that is there's a few really strong arguments to be made for parallels, but then your mind fills in the blanks for right. the rest. Have they ever interviewed like anyone from Pink Floyd? Uh, do they deny it or just or they just I don't they know. do like a little wink like maybe? Mm. No, I don't. I know I've gone to like go ahead and buy the album. I've out. been to midnight showings of you know Pink Floyd's where they show the Wizard of Oz and they play the the oh wow Dark got that Side big they were doing that oh yeah yeah it's like a I mean it's. Big. I mean, I guess it's probably as big as Rocky Horror is today. How much weed did you smoke? <laughs> well, not just. Uh, well, well, you know. Anyway, so it's, <laughs> but it's um. It's not legal in Texas. Well, it's one of those things where you can trick yourself into believing it, you know. And I think that that's the same now, thing here. You can trick yourself believing it. I mean, there are, like I said. Well, there's when some real makes the cor- Oh yeah, like the the main bad guy with the gun. Like there's like this one Mike guy TV. who's like an unstoppable killing machine security guy, yeah. I, and he says that's Mike TV from uh, Charlie Sheen. I was like, all right, that's stupid. Yeah, it is. Look, I, it, think, the, I think the Veruca Salt one's the best one. Tell us that's one. a great one. But if you look just in broad strokes, this is a group that started out in squalor, just like the Bucket family. Yep. They get like a magic ticket of sorts. Yep. You know, they get to enter this new world in yep. which the rules are different and they really don't understand what's going on. Right. And the uh, person, the Wilford character, like the char- uh, Wonka in the Wonka, he's c- deceptively <laughs> charming, but he's also clearly crazy. And you yeah. don't know if he's... Like in the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you don't know if Wonka's a good guy or a bad guy, really. Well, he like you don't see him throughout the whole movie. And then there's like... His assistant, who, uh, well, he's not his assistant. You think he's like a scumbag or something. Yeah. Uh, what was his name? He had a funny uh, name. Oh, the, the guy who you, he's, yeah, he's supposed to be like a Russian spy or something. It's so creepy when he would like grab yes. and whisper into them. Maybe, yeah. Like, and you're just like. Right. That was yeah. a great. The 70s were different. Time. Yeah. But Can it was that. great because like you, like as a kid watching that, you almost believed that you caught it and no one else did. Right. You know, like even though it was like overtly telegraphed that this is what's going on. You're like, hey, mom, did you see that? That guy, you know, and like... Yeah, it, um, yeah he was working for Willy Wonka the whole time. Yeah. But, like, what's funny about that movie and just like any other 70s movie, and it's kind of interesting, when you watch the movie, like, Willy Wonka doesn't show up till like... Right. An hour into the film. Oh, yeah. It's weird. And by the time he gets to the actual chocolate factory, the actual factory is like a half hour. Yeah. I mean, well... Yeah, I think that's only Gene Wilder's performance that made the Wonka character. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, they called yeah. it Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It wasn't like Willie. When we call it. Right, okay, that makes sense. <clears throat> and then, like, you know, Charlie is like kind of. All the other kids are shitty. Yep. And Charlie, you know, he's the poor kid, but he's like well meaning. And, like, he's just. Like, he's a nice kid. Like he's, it is. Yeah. yeah. You know, Part the of other, it. Yeah, the kids are just shitty. They've been given everything. I mean, obviously, one's the super rich one, but they're all spoiled. I mean, it's funny. Yeah. Rupert Salt's spoiled, but they're all spoiled. They're Rupert all, Salt they're is all... the wealthy one. Right. The other one, the, the parents just never gave him any limits. Like, yeah. Mike TV and the gum girl. Yeah. And, I mean, like, they may or may not have been... They were definitely wealthier than the Buckets. Oh, yeah. No, but, they were, like, middle, upper, cl- upper class. They yeah. had opportunities. Regardless. But, right, yeah, right. Charlie is literally Bucket. <laughs> he's a Bucket. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's got, got four grandparents living in a bed. I always found that bizarre. Yeah. Super weirdest thing ever. It was, yeah. I was like, uh, you know the part when the grandpa gets up and starts dancing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, if I was, like, the mom in the house, I'd be like... The fuck? Right. You could have been working you this whole time. You could have been fucking helping out? You <laughs> fucking... Yeah. <laughs> sitting in a bed in the middle of my living it room was, with four of yeah. you smelling? I changed that, your bedpans every day? That oh, was. but I got a golden ticket. <laughs> I'm going to start dancing. I guess I could have... I just need to be motivated. Well, there, there was like... Yeah, okay, so... I know, it's a stupid movie. <laughs> no, no. The, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory... In a lot of ways, that that was kind of like the eccentric industrialist. There's a, a lot of these types of movies have like almost an undercurrent of like, 
they're not like anti-technology. I mean, the, the, the lesson here for any of these isn't technology is bad and we should just well, farm. I wouldn't say Willy Wonka's a good guy. I mean, he's a crazy eccentric. He's got a bunch of... He's got a bunch of slaves working for him. Yeah, he's a cl- uh, colonialist. You know, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. He, like, uh, well, the, okay. So the real one in the movie, he like tricks like a little tribe that go in, like right, of, yeah, uh, the Oompa Loompas. But they're like a tribe, and they're yeah. like really small. Well, yeah. And in the, in the movie, the seventies one, they replace them with dwarves. They didn't have the right. technology to create like ten inch people back then. Yeah. I think yeah. in the new in the new one when they use Deep Roy, it plays them all. Yeah. Well, in they're the, like a foot tall. I want to say in the and they're awesome because that's what they were supposed to be like. Well, in the original book, I want to say the illustrations were like terribly racist. Oh yeah, I, I, I don't well, remember that clearly. Was, uh, I think he was like a supposedly an anti semite. Oh yeah, uh, uh, Roald Dahl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read some bad things about him. He has some good things and he has some bad things. It's like we, what, we say, what do we say? Anybody that yeah. forty five years ago is a, basically a piece of shit. Yeah, that, we had just been talking <laughs> about that last night. Yeah, and I I do think that like, and I, I'm not excusing it or. And I, I think I said, and, and I just made this up off the top of my head. It's not like a deeply held belief, but like. Anything before 1950 is probably pretty problematic in some on some level or another. Right. You know, I mean, like in some way, you could look at it and it's not an excuse. It's just no, a it's reality. not an excuse. It, it's a reality. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. I think that like there's probably younger people today that would look at us and say like, well, when you said that, that was insane. I mean, you could look at people sure. who were like artists back in the 70s, and they would probably be considered like fucking. Oh, well, right now. Yeah. I mean, they wouldn't be, but if you, you know, you don't meet a certain criteria. You know, it's like uh, I went to the post office. This guy I talk yeah, yeah. to you all the time there because I'm always like, oh yeah, out yeah, just sending out And this guy, I guess he I know, maybe he follows me. Or we were talking, and it's funny. He talked politics with me. Sure. And he made a joke, and he said, like, you know, especially everything going on with Trump. He goes, man, you know, just put me in a coma, wake me up after 2020 or something. Right, right. And I said, I don't think you want to do that. Because I don't think you would like what you wake up to. Yeah. Because I said, like, as be- and, I, and that is true. I would not want to jump in time. But as I feel like everything that's going on, we're being conditioned. Right, right. If you woke up, let's say, like, I feel weird if I don't look at my phone for four hours. Yeah. And then you see all these headlines or all these things it's you missed so out. It's so it, yeah. Like, it, it's, just, it's kind of disgusting. So imagine you went into a coma or a machine or whatever it is. To, right. And you wake up two years, just two years later. No, yeah. I'm not talking ten. Two years later, you especially post twenty sixteen. Yeah, you'd the world be, would be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, like it would just, be very, very strange. Like a lot of it just wouldn't. It wouldn't make any sense. You yeah. Know? Well, like if you had told me like four years ago that like evangelicals would be championing Donald Trump, I mean, it just wouldn't have registered it's like well, I mean I would I was never shocked by that. Yeah I was. I yeah. wasn't when he started pushing the birther thing back in oh, yeah, twenty eleven yeah. they were all behind him and he was on Fox News. I think it's like once you're part of that little circle right, in that tribe you can say whatever the fuck you want and yeah. like they'll the you know it's all a game. They just want power so well they don't give a shit. Yeah it was it's you know it's funny. So we I guess we we kind of not that we veered away from mm. snow, Snowpiercer, but like that's... Yeah, just a little. Well, we'll jump t- to the end. These are the things. origins of Snowpiercer. <laughs> well, in a lot of ways We're it was, because like, he he sets up this train, and the engine is the it's built to be like almost spiritual. Well, you know? you're, like, you're told throughout the whole movie that the engine is this... Perpetual. It's, yeah, and it works on... It, it, it's and like infinity or something, or they say yeah. like... It, yeah, it's, it's, it's eternal. It, it's it perpetual. Won't die. It's like this amazing technology. Whatever Wilford designed, right. uh, engineered, like they'll they'll just keep running. Suppose they'll run forever. Yeah, they believe that the train will be forever. Yes. Oh, and that part when they're in the school and they sing the song. Rallo, oh rallo, yeah, rallo, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. What yeah, happens we when the train all, stops? We all die. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. yeah. We all die. We're <laughs> yeah. all like, yay! It's the most fucked up part it of the is. movie. But like... Because they're all like being taught... They're all fascists. But here's the irony, is that the the, the engine isn't eternal, right? right. And well, it's not forever. And it's it's breaking. Well, this is where you find... This is where the... So the, the school, I think, is kind of like in the middle. And it's right. like the middle of the movie. So that's where like... Or like... End of the second third or whatever. Sure, sure. That's when like there's a big swerve. You see, like, this creepy bald guy comes in with eggs. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah. we're, it's a treat. Like, they have eggs. You know, right. that's a big deal. I mean, 
fact, sure, there's yeah. eggs on this train. That, you got a chicken. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the eggs, uh, yeah, and then you find out that they were hiding guns because they were convinced that guns were uh, extinct. Right. And that's no more when you bullets. find out they do have bullets, and then a lot of people are killed there. Yeah. Everyone's, except for Curtis and a couple of the main characters. That's when the kid. I think that's when the the kids kill Jamie Bell's character yep. killed the one that, and then, and then you find out a lot of things about John Hurt's character. Right, there's more to him than you were maybe originally. He thought, thought he was just like this elder leader, wise man, whatever. He's, he wants to help the revolution. You find out later that he talks to Wilford all the time. Yeah, it's kind of, and Wilford makes a joke like he's on one end of the train, he's on the other end. And I guess they're always communicating. I don't really understand the relationship. I'm like, were they friends? Like, well, why would you agree to put yourself like, yeah, yeah, why yeah would I'll you go sit in the back of the rabble and I'll start and cutting feed my own, people my hand, yeah, yeah, my foot, like chopping off my my limbs so you don't need a baby. It is weird because like, like I never understood like there are hints of that in the very beginning. The John Hurt character says stuff that make you know quickly that he knows Wilford more. Well, he than says to most. Curtis too about. You know, you want to have two hands hold a woman. Yeah. And then Wilfred says the same thing to him later. Yeah. That is weird, yeah. They, they like, they're almost like... They're two sides of the same coin. Yeah. You know, and they need each other. That's, that's the thing is that they always, they talk often about it being an ecosystem and there needs to be this balance. And they even say overtly towards the end, like, a certain percentage of the tail section needs to die. We well, need to have Well, he says because, I guess... They can, and this is again, this is fucked up because this is like a societal thing, right? Where, which doesn't the way we our politics and everything doesn't make any sense in this country, but that yeah, the poor, the uneducated or whatever, they all live in the back, and, yep. and, he, and he said, Wilford kind of says in, in in like a snide snide way, he's probably right though, but he's it sounds like an asshole when he says it. Yeah, they, yeah, they like breed like rabbits in the back. There's no room. So the real goal of the Curtis Revolution, and he says it's good too. It's good for everybody on the train. They get yeah, the yeah. story. He says humanity needs to be miserable. Humanity needs to, and which is funny because that's like that's back to the Matrix. It, they, yes. They, if things are too perfect and too nice, that humanity will lose its mind. Like we need right. to constantly be. You need a struggle. We need to go through waves. We need to have a struggle. We need yep. to have like passivity. We need to have cra- a crazy moment. We need like different waves. Or we cannot exist. Or yeah, go insane. And because in the Matrix they say that when you know when Colonel Sanders from the Matrix <laughs> says uh, talks about his seven rest. He, didn't he say it was the seventh iteration of the Matrix? He did he say the seventh generation? Oh, seven herbs and spices. Right. Seven I herbs see and a spices? parallel there. Oh my you god! You should do the <laughs> yeah. Let's do the yeah, we'll do our own. We're gonna do uh, finger licking Matrix. Finger licking. <laughs> ew. Uh, so we'll have to do the K Matrix. KFC, Matrix. KFC yeah. tricks. Well, look, he, it, this movie is like a lot Matrixy. Well, I mean, it's ways. again, it's all it is sci-fi and so yeah. dystopian. It's you know, and there's revelations. So, you know, it's like right. when he says to him, to Neo, you know, this humanity, like the Matrix, had to be like real life, or people wouldn't accept. Yeah, it. They, they would rebel like mentally. They, they well, we to... just yeah, we'd give out. Like we right. need to. Be in a constant state of like just upheaval. And yeah, like that's how humanity is. It, yeah, which to me it sounds like does humanity need to be like that? I mean, do we need to always be having a state of war? Are we conditioned that way? I mean, is our society just runs that way? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like when you see these in movies and they say things like that, like or just in books and stuff. Right, they right. say like humanity needs to live in chaos or live so like are we being like. Is that like something you're uh, uh, conditioned? Non-sen- yeah, nonsensical thing you're passing down. You know, like when people pass religion down. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't but know. like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> do we? Can't we live in peace? I don't know. Maybe not. I guess yeah. not. Because I think no matter what, and I've said this about like religion and groups sure. and everything that uh, no matter what what happens and whatever the situation is, and then when we talked about the uh, flat Earth society, people, right, right. That in the end, even the, the infighting in the group, it's like yeah, they're all have, they all have that common goal. They want to teach. They want people to live right. on flat Earth. But 
they I think it still becomes this like I think a lot of that predicated on like limited resources. I think once you once you allow for the possibility of unlimited resources, I don't think we've ever had that. So if we did, then who's to say what we would be like? I know that if there's limited resources, you're going to fight over it. I just think that no matter what situation you're in, there's a hierarchy. There's always yeah. somebody who wants to be... That's why, like, I remember growing up and, like, my parents took me to Temple and I was like... Oh, yeah. And I hated it because one of the things I didn't like about it, just like any other group... You know, there's a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy. There's people. It, it's like there's politicians. Like when yeah. I worked in an office. There was politicians, and they would try to like control the office, or right. you know, or move up. And it's all political. They were like the people. It's not about talent or about like what you deserve. Right, and, right. And that's regardless. I'm just saying, in any, in any social situation, well, how humanity is, we there's a hierarchy. No matter what, it could be like a farm with seven people on it. Yeah, yeah. And there's going to be a leader. Right, and right. Be like a second command. Yeah, and it was like Lord be, of the Flies. And there's going to be like, a toady. And then, yeah, or a piggy. Yeah, or a piggy. 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 Yeah. <laughs> well, look, at, at the end, um, at the end of this, like, all throughout it, you had been kind of, there, there were a couple different choices. You had the security expert guy. I, forget, I don't know the guy's name. Was, I think he's probably a Korean actor. Chronal man. Yeah, well, he, he wants to destroy the train. Right. And he thinks that we could live elsewhere. And Chris Evans wants to... Well, he doesn't know what he wants at this point because yeah. I think he his goal was to take the train over, get the water, but then everything changes. Well, and, that was the big joke. And then he finds there. out that Curtis was... Uh, no, I guess he finds out that later when he meets Wilford. He, fought, he thinks he can take over the water, but he can't even do that. Even that's an illusion. Where was the water? It comes from the front of the train. The nose of the train hits Collects these the icebergs yeah. and the snow and whatever and yeah. sucks it up. And so the water that Chris Evans thought he was going to take control of yeah. was just like a filling station. The, the only thing That's he would right. have done is destroyed the water for his own people. Right. He, the people up front would have been fine. Yeah. They, yeah. So his whole, all of his goals were illusory. Like, well, because he didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't have the resources. He didn't know how the system worked. Yeah. It's like, it's like conspiracies. Where well, yeah. Conspiracies are designed to make you think, like, this is how it works. Right. Like, I, I always see this thing, like, whenever they say, like... Oh, when the guy becomes like president of the United States, yeah, yeah. they get taken to a room, and and people think they oh, what's the thing you think people always think they're being told? Um, like the UFOs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, always, <laughs> always think that. It's just stupid. Yeah, yeah. I'm like no, they're not. Like when Donald Trump got, became president, he didn't take him to a fucking room and said, "Oh, this is where Alf lives." No, no, they, they, no, Mac. Of course, ta- yeah, right. They, uh, they, yeah, he like taught yeah. him how He's to like, use the remote. Hey, come in here, <laughs> hey. Donald, it's me, Alf. Yeah, they look kind of similar, you know? They got orange hair. Yeah. Weird, uh, right. both racist. Yes. Hate cats. They both grabbed, uh, Grab, grabbed things by the pussy. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Oh, There's oh. like a lot there, yeah. yeah. Alf, Actually, right. get that pussy out of your mouth, Alf. <laughs> Donald. Well, Donald. So, okay, so like... It was all an illusion. Like, he was never going to change but you, but, I mean, I know I went on the offering, but yeah, like, yeah. which is hard not to do. Yeah, right. Um, mm-hmm. But I think, you know, kind of like Chris Evans, like, people think that's... It's like they can't... They don't know how the system works or whatever. Not, I don't know how the system right, works either. Right, right. But I like to think that, like... No, he's probably, like, told, like, okay, well, listen, this is the countries we do trading in. This is, like, what we do. Yeah. This is our goal. This is what we are. Not, like, oh, this is where the Zagnox is. <laughs> if you make the Zag bars mad, then they're going right, to bring right, right. down the lizard people. No. But that's, like, somebody who doesn't know anything, and they, like, go on, like, yeah. they watch an Infowars or something all the time. They're going to think that's the big... Well, the choices were... So, Chris Evans gets to the end of the train, and Wilford's like, I want you to be the new me. And it's kind of weird, I guess. Yeah. Well, he's been fe- he's the one that's been feeding him information. Yeah, they give these like weird little yeah. bullet capsules, right? And I'm and like, it's because Wilford he needed a revolution like every so often to thin the herd. Yeah, to, he, right, all that. They said seventy four percent, and then he calls that bald guy later. Yeah, when they have the guns and they go in the back and they're basically killing everybody. In the right. Back. And they're like, yeah, but they he, have a counter. And they're like, and he says, and it wasn't even. And Chris Evans was like, well, how did you know? It would get to me, and he's like, "I didn't. It didn't matter who it got to. Like, it didn't, it didn't even matter. See, you're not special or anything, Chris Evans. It's just, I need to get someone to get this going. Someone was yeah. going to take up the mantle, you know. Yeah, it wasn't a message to you. So Chris Evans could either 
uh, take over the train and keep it going. Well, but what does he find out? He finds out a bunch of things about it that Some makes terrible it, things. Well, one, he finds out the guy that he looked up to, the one that fed him the arm, the one that he basically treated like as a god, the one that changed him, made him like radicalized him. Yeah. Well, he bit, no, he didn't radicalize him. He brought his humanity back. No, he yeah, was yeah, yeah. eating babies. He says, <laughs> "I know what babies taste like." They were eating. He was part of that. Right. They were just. He's like, he knows that baby stays better. Like, mm. you know, and he was going to eat his best friend in the movie. Right. You find that out later. The kid yeah. was like 18 or whatever. That he was going to eat him and that John Hurt prevented him right, from, from eating them. him. Yeah. So you find out all these things. So I would say he radicalized him. I think he... Yeah, he, he maybe... And then he finds him. out that John Hurt wasn't this perfect... No. Uh, symbol of humanity that no. this elder wise man that he was talking to Wolf for the whole fucking time and he was in on that, it and he was in on it and the whole goal was to just get more room in the back yeah and, and John Hurt knew that the, and they planned it like we'll get this revolution going we'll kill a bunch of people and and the end game is you guys just have more room in the back right and like that's it but that's I guess it. more room is better well and, more and room is said, better what does he say to him too you've never been alone yeah, he, he gives been alone him, in like seventeen years. Right, he yeah. gives him an opportunity to be alone. Uh, Wilford does. Yeah. He lets Chris Evans be alone, um, and then shortly after, he discovers what the children had been disappearing. Well, from. yeah, he finds out that the engine, and this is another parallel. This is the thing he brought up in the Wonka. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Was that the the part that runs the train? A part, an integral part that runs the train went extinct. Yes. And that's where they said that Oompa-Loompas. Right, small. right. And that's why they use specific children. And he, and he opens up. Uh, it was the girl that the, the you find out is the daughter of the, the guy who wants to blow a plane. He got yep. shot. He's still alive, but... Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the, the fuck... Okay, so... I don't know we're going back, but like... Okay, so they go through the... They fight their way through. Sure. To get the, and then like the last... I hated the last part. It's like a nightclub. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're all... It's so... The, like the nightclub is right before Wilford and it's just this bacchanal they're all on drugs they're all probably doing chrono or whatever right, all right. Like, it's an endless party I just and there's think, a whole bunch of them in there yeah. and you're just like in a way it's not much different from the back no it's a crowded they just have nicer clothes mm-hmm. but it's just this crowded rave it's really bizarre and again it is. the size it makes no sense the size yeah. of the width of the size of the rooms make no sense it, from the outside it's a train right each cart has uh, got Bears and Bears, TARDIS syndrome. Yeah. It is, well, it's weird. I mean, it does make sense thematically. I mean, it, it's a good parallel. Uh, it doesn't make sense, like, from a functional standpoint. No. Like, you wouldn't have a discotheque next to the car, the engine. But it's, like, it's symbolic and it represents, right. like, just, it's like chaos, too. Yeah. You know, like, it's like the end of the world. It's like that, what's that? Fishbone song. Like oh, Party yeah. Ground Party Zero. Ground Zero. That's yeah. a great song. Maybe think of that video. And like oh, the video funny. is crazy too because like in the beginning of the video there's like guards right. and they're, they're wearing like um, these masks. Are you talking like, about the Fishbone song? Yeah, the they, Fishbone oh, yeah, I don't remember. I oh, remember yeah. seeing it's this video. It's a crazy video. video and it's like it is like I don't think Party I've seen Ground that Zero. in 20 or 30 and years. And the, the guards are wearing like these like uh, what's this Egyptian like like oh, okay. a oh, like Anubis. Anubis, yeah. yeah, helmets, and it's like super huh. weird. It's like it is like an apocalypse. So oh, that's my, crazy. Now, like I guess I haven't seen this video in like 20, 30 years yeah. either. Google it. Right, I will. Be making the shit up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like right. A favorite dream. I mean, I brought Alf, so yeah, I mean, that's who knows? Yeah, fuck yeah. knows, you know. Uh, so it is like this chaotic scene, and like you said, then he ends up in Will. They finally right. get to meet Wilford, and that's when you meet Ed Harris, and it's like, and you're not, you don't know who it's Ed Harris. I didn't know who, I, mean, I could have looked it up, but I didn't know Ed Harris was in it. So when I saw I it, I was either, like, oh, yeah. cool, I know who that is. Right. That's a big name. Uh, and, you know, he's like, I don't want to do this anymore. Again, yeah. uh, Willy Wonka parallel. It was a very big Willy Wonka parallel. And he's by himself in yep. there, except for that weird lady. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but then you find out the kid, that, and that's the moment too. When I watched the movie, I found uh, there was some hope. I, I'm like watching it, and sure. they're winning. But man, when they showed the kids yeah. and what it took to keep the train going, right? I was like, I I want this train. I want you, mad he dead. Like yeah. I don't. I and I think you're being told that. I think you're telling. I do, yeah, like, I agree. We don't deserve to be alive. Like if that's what it takes. 
if that's what it gets to to keep things going is to like put little kids in there well that was it I mean you know if you're like okay with like schools getting shot up yeah if you're okay with like kid like the environment and everything do you remember that deserve to move on yeah Yeah, it's like do you remember that Mar? it's a famous speech Mario Silvio Mario Savio no uh he was a student activist in the 60s, and he gave a famous speech. Okay. Uh, and um, you can find it on YouTube. They actually gave a version of it in the remake of Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> but he... Wait a... Kind of learned something. But well, yeah. he, he said... He basically gives a speech, and he says, like, if... He's talking about the university and how the university sold people out. And he's like, if the university is a company... And, though no, they were doing stuff for the Vietnam War. The university was... Allowing the Pentagon to use their resources, yeah, yeah, and so. Okay. And he's like, if the university is a company, then the faculty are employees, and the students were the raw material. Yeah, you know, we're the raw, we're the raw material, we're the product. Yeah. And he said, there comes a time. I'm grossly paraphrasing here, where the the machine is so terrible and so odious that you, you to even sit and passively allow the machine to operate makes you guilty. And it's up to you then. It's your obligation to, like, throw your bodies. Yeah, there was, like, uh, some guy who said something, like, using, obviously not that, but I think after 9-11 that happened or something. Yeah, yeah. It was, like, this famous college professor. And he was, it, there was a lot of controversy. He said something that the people in the building were technocrats or something. Right, right, yeah, sure. And, uh, that's a little bit extreme. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're not going to win uh, people over with that. No, no. But, but Chris, I know what he's saying. Chris Evans in the, the movie th- threw his body on the machine and prevented it from working. I mean, he, well, he literally he, did that. He, he like, sticks his arm in to save the kid. Yes. Well, and Which is like a parallel to what John Hurt did, his character did to save him yeah. from eating. He gave his arm. So it's kind of like it's he's different. doing the same thing. He's giving his arm. He's giving up something so that this kid could... So we could free this child, right. which was Octavia Spencer's kid from the yes, beginning. And then Timmy. there was like another kid. There was another kid there who I think the guy who gets his arm removed. Yeah. His kid was taken too. You find out his kid was stolen earlier. Right. And he's the one. He goes into like the tra- – like, it's weird. He walks into like some compartment in the train too. Well, that's so look the thing. these little kids stored this, everywhere. engine. And they're like zombified. Yeah. You know, they're passively – and, and they know their place. You know, they're just like, nope, this is what... And so Chris Evans sees the kid operating the machine. Chris Evans throws his body on the gears of the machine and prevents it from working. He knows that getting the kid out is going to bust the machine. Right. He's decided right there, um, the, we're ending this. Yeah. He does it, but it's, it's fucking futile because another kid just takes his place. And you'll never Well, stop that kid it. goes into a different part of it. Yeah, but I, I always that assumed kid, that it was like... No, because that kid goes in... I think he goes into that part first. Yeah. And then he sticks his arm in. Okay. Um, you know, because the girl pulls the ply board. The, right. She shows him, like... She shows is. him, like, yeah, he's got... Like, look. And then Wilfred's just sitting there, and he's just like, yeah, whatever. You know? Right. It's like, listen, you want the train to run or not? That's guy? it. You know? It's like, this is how it runs, you know? Yeah. This, he is, this is the this is the secret. This is the secret. You know, you want to know how the sausage is made, right? Yeah. You look. You want to go to Old Navy and buy four dollars shirts. Some kid, you know, yeah. High I, I, I work. used to work on kids' clothing. I said, yeah. I made kids' clothes made by kids. Right. <laughs> <laughs> kids were kids. kids. You know. Yeah. Well, like that's it. Like, look, you want? Do you want to go to Old Navy and buy like a whole new wardrobe for a hundred bucks? You know, like three pairs of pants and eight shirts. You can do that, but look, some little kid in, in like Southeast Asia has got to yeah. work 18 hours a day for like 30 cents. Yeah. That's what happens. And I think that's the weird part is that like... Well, they said that the the parallels between that and like the industrial age where they would use... Children, oh, yeah. You know, and it's always funny when you see a politician, any politician today should be voted at immediately out of office when they bring up... And I've heard this from like... Uh, Governor from Maine oh, a couple years ago said this. or whatever. Yeah, he said that they should bring reduced child labor laws so that we could get kids back to work. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, you, that, you should insane. be like, like you, you, you shouldn't even be allowed to say that in public. Like, no. you should be like immediately like yeah. just crucified. Like, well, yeah. I mean, those laws like back in the day, you know, we're talking like turn of the century, twenties, right? And stuff yeah. Like that like. Yeah, you would see kids in coal mines and like they were using yeah. like little hands, you know, and 
they used them. They basically destroyed these kids' lives. Oh, I mean, easily, yeah, are, yeah. You're basically destroying their whatever they can be when they're older. I mean, you're using them when they're young. Well, that's, yeah, that's the thing is that, like, it is a system where, like... It's a waste for, of potential. Yeah. It's a waste of... For the machine to keep working, everyone's got to do their part, you right. know, and it's... But the part, if it, the, the machine is... They're the shoe. Yeah, but if... They're it, the and, shoe. And if I'm the hat. Yeah, I'm the yeah. Hat. <laughs> but if the machine, if it takes, like, the worst thing to get the machine going, the machine doesn't deserve to keep going. It's right. Like, well, that's the thing is, that's like... The, yeah. Yeah. Well, like when I go to Old Navy, I, I bought my daughter stuff at Old Navy. Hey, Old Navy, if you want to sponsor, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm still well, going on about that. Uh, yeah. Okay. But let me not pick on Old Navy. Yeah, we can uh, say like every store. Every store. Yeah. It's everyone not, in the apparel industry. <laughs> I say Old Navy because look, I shop there frequently. I mean, but like, see, he buys some at Old Navy. You, Old Navy. If you, will, you pay us, we will gladly. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Old Navy. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, in a lot of ways, it is. You know, but like. If you participate, <laughs> if you participate in it, you're of it, right? And yeah, so you, like, you don't realize it. Yeah, you just you're you're passively but allowing. It, can the you, but do you control it? You don't control it. Well, I that's mean, what like, that security gonna, expert was. Because honestly, to really find, I I worked in like industries and stuff like that. Just because right. you go to like an expensive place to buy something, it's still made by. Oh kids. yeah, yeah. It's still made by kids, like, right? It, it, or what? people in other countries like almost all textiles come from the the less developed parts of southeast asia well it's happening or here in the united states central now. america it's yeah. happening in the united states now where areas are like deprived and it's kind of funny because they talk about this in so an episode of silicon valley oh okay where, like he's like i'll bring my factory to this town and he and he does it to like get all these tax write-offs right right and the mayor's like i guess i'll close down the library I guess yeah I'll do right this. and it's like you know, and they keep the big thing they were bringing. Like, we're bringing jobs back to this country, and but then you find out each state that they're bringing back to, their right to work states. Yeah, yeah. Which is like uh, right, your right to you work. Can't have twelve dollars an hour. Or not even. Yeah, it's no union. And right, right to be fired at yeah. any moment. Notice it's a. It's one of those like words they use like uh, death tax. Yeah, yeah. Air act. You know all these like bullshit yeah, words. But, yeah, yeah. They, and they don't mean that. Well. I don't know. At the end, you have you have all these choices that could be made, and the security expert wanted to blow everything up. He said that he was like the the Edward Norton Brad Pitt character in Fight Club. Well, okay, or this, Mr. his whole thing was that the only solution is to get the fuck off of here. Right. That this, the, this you can't sustain it's this. Broken. It, it, and even with Wilford saying, you know, with the kids, like, how long is that going to last? You can't sustain that. You keep you cranking out sustain. new kids. They breed like rabbits back in the tail section. Right. That's what he was saying. Is that that's what the tail section is for. We need kids. Your raw right. material. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, but, they could have kept yeah. it going forever by I guess. breeding the kids. Right. Yeah. New machine, like a different part breaks down. They just plug in a new but kid. But at some point, like, up. Yeah. I, I mean, it's fantasy. That's it what is. Fantasy yeah. I mean, I, the way I looked at it was that. This thing is not sustainable. Right. They could crap out as many kids. They could put a, another kid in. Like, yeah, if it was bad, they could just put a kid there. You're only delaying the inevitable. You're delaying the inevitable. Yeah. Time on Earth has ended, or the, the machine, the, the, you know, and, and he sees the snowflake come in. Yeah. With the bullet hole, the, the security right, expert. Right. And he said that the snow was, like, soft. Yeah. Not I, an ice. It was a soft snowflake right, right. that... We can survive outside. Well, and he grab he steals those coats. Yes, from like the the raving people. Yeah, yeah. He well, he he wants to blow this. He tries to blow a hole out the side of the cart, right? Yeah, I mean, he wants to. Yeah, he wants to. He he's by like I guess whatever would be the exit. Though it's a yeah. clock, and he's not really a drug addict. He's been collecting chrome all the right, time yeah. because he it's a bomb. He was, yeah, he was collecting a bomb, and he had the matches. He had he was saving the match to light the colonel. Right, and he told the the girl like that's the last at the very end. And I was real slow to pick up on that. To be honest with you, I didn't. I thought he was a, a drug addict. I, well, yeah, I you you were told that throughout the movie, and then towards but the end of it, the when end, they talk to each other, yeah, even though like he's speaking Korean, the other one's speaking Re- English. Yeah. You don't really know if they understand each other. I know they have like a translator, but at that point, uh, that's when they he's telling them like. We can get off this train. Yeah. And I think it's before he goes in to meet Wilford. Uh, that Because that's... The woman right. comes with, up the gun and tells him yeah. to go in there. 
because she shoots him. She shoots right, him, yes. the Korean guy, the and you think he's dead. You th- yeah, but yeah. He's not. He's just it's stunned. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I think he's gonna die. <laughs> well, yeah. So the Korean guy's plan was to blow everything up and get off the train, and. Chris Evans' ultimate plan at the end was just to destroy everything. Like we're, we're not, we're done here. So he blows up the train. Yep. Um, he grabs his kid. He grabs the Octavia Spencer's kid. Yeah. You can see that he ripped his arm off or something. Yeah, he's, he gave it. his arm yeah. to the machine. Right. They hope protect the kids because they blew. Yeah. The train. Right. Everyone dies. Yes. Everyone on the train dies. There's no survivors. Right. The only survivors is the little kid. Yona and Timmy, I think their yeah. names are. Yeah, and uh, this big age gap, so if they're going to want to repopulate, that girl's got to right. be a while. Well, if, you know, <laughs> it's funny because, like... It's going to be weird. <laughs> it was weird. When I saw that, I was like, okay, it's a guy and a girl, but there was a big age difference. Yes. Right? <laughs> like, right, um, 12 years. <laughs> and and they, the, they kind of stumble off the train... And in the distance... Oh, this is fucked. And yeah. this can be looked at in many different right. ways. Right. You could either be a complete, like, uh, negative. And, right. Um, what do they see? Well, they see a polar bear. Right, uh, and it's, but it's far enough away so that you're... When I first saw it, I must... I don't know if I was polar watching... Polar bears run pretty fast. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, when I saw it, they, they, at first they show the polar bear from a distance, and then they, they show a close-up of it. Yeah. And if you had asked me before I rewatched the movie, I would have sworn to you the polar bear was like six feet from him. No, that's not really the case. The no, polar bear is like far away. yes, very like significantly. It's up on a, a mountain ledge or something. Yeah, but you immediately know that guy was right. There's life outside. It's not that cold. I mean, it's, it it's cold. It's cold, but it's like normal. I mean, it's cold because in the beginning of the movie, that guy's arms freeze off. Yeah, in yeah. seven minutes. So, but he was. He, they even said time. at this altitude. So right. I so, mean, they made it clear that it was an unusual. Okay. Yeah. But you know that life is possible. The polar bears... They don't bears, need to be stuck in this machine. Right. You know, it's like... They and, never did, yeah. And it, and that is that symbolic, too, that the machine is a lie, too. They're keeping people in there. Yeah. When in reality, they're... they're it's like... You can well, say that about, like, certain systems of government. Yeah, that's 100%. Of like of, it's a system of oppression. It or, is. And it feeds on itself and you need it to keep going. The people who run it need it to keep going. Right. Otherwise they have nothing. If they got off that train, then the tail section people would have been far better suited to survive than Oh yeah. The the, the well, thing. Yeah. 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 But the two people that survive are they gonna make it? They never they oh, yeah. lived life up. One's a child, literally a child, the other one's uh Never lived outside the right. train. I mean, if I talk about it intellectually, then these kids are dead by morning, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, they're they're not just, gonna, I mean, where, they're where are they gonna, stupid kids. They've never been yeah. off a train. Yeah, where are they going? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, realistically, they probably would have waited for the train to stop being on fire and then just walked right back into the train and, and just used get all it. the. Get whatever they can get out of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, used it I as would. a shelter. I mean, that, yeah. they could probably last a while that way. Like, like rain at it. Right. Um, I some, guess there's still some things in there. I mean, the train's yeah. destroyed, but you tell me you can't like get they some would, of that yeah. meat. Theoretically, theoretically, there there might be other people around, you know, on the planet. That's possible. I always thought that too. Like in this movie, in this universe, I mean, did it, okay, you say everyone fro- okay, everyone froze, but like really, you but the tell polar me? bear didn't. So clearly, well, that's proof that other things might not have. The only okay, so things that could probably survive no matter what. Bugs? Bugs. I don't, this is really stupid. Yeah, yeah. Can you freeze... Can fish freeze and then kind of like... don't? Because I had koi, and they told me in the wintertime they hibernate. Yeah. So let's say the oceans froze for like... Or right. Or whatever. Everything froze in the ocean. I think the ocean probably. started to melt. Would they... Like... Would they just be dead or would they... There was some of them actually like... Live. My suspicion is that some I'm not of them a would fishologist. Live. Yeah, right. Or whatever you um, call them. I don't even like the band fish. <laughs> uh, <it's, laughs> I like the hacky sack. But yeah, right. I but I don't know. My, my suspicion is that even if look, even why if did some, the spin doctor start playing when you brought up fish? And that that makes no sense. Oh, like, if you want to yeah. be mad like that, I'm like, I know that's not a fish song. <laughs> right, right, right. But, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense. So yeah, um, I don't know. I look. I think. I wish I knew what the director wanted us to think. I, I think well, it's based on a graphic novel. Okay. And I was trying to find it online. Um, supposedly, you find out what happens to those kids there. Oh, okay. They go into it more. Do they live? I have no, no idea. I couldn't no. find it. I mean, look, I only spent about ten seconds searching, and then I. I think. Of, of, Shining light came yeah. up and I got distracted. <laughs> well, the way the way the film ends to me is hopeful, in the sense that you, you never get the idea that they're in imminent harm. The polar I don't bear know. I saw Paul Bear and I was like, they're dead. Well, the polar bear looks at them and doesn't even look like it. Doesn't start galloping towards them. I would imagine know? if I was a polar bear, right? You saw two little of them. meat things came out. Yeah, and I'm looking for food. Right, right. Yeah, I'd be like, ooh. Yeah, yum yum. But even then, theoretically, they they could scamper back onto the train. I, I think they they'd be okay. I, I guess it yeah. doesn't matter. It's a move. It, it, it ends it, there, right. It, so, but the the real thing is the train's done. Yeah, right? the train's, like the train's done. done. It's off the track. It's not coming back. Yeah, yeah, it's done. And everybody what supposedly it, the director or something ever said that everybody in the train's dead. Right. No one survived except them. And it seemed that way. I mean, it, it, it was that part wasn't ambiguous to me. It seemed like they're the only two survivors. Well, they were. Yeah. They're, and it's weird, they're both not, uh, maybe I'm like reading too much into it, but they're both like persons of color, you know, like they, they it was, wow. well, it wasn't like, <laughs> no, I mean, that's I, cool. It wasn't like they were, cause like, look, look at the, not the villains, but like, it was like the older white guys were the villains. Here, yeah. You know, I mean like, and there was the older white woman too, that was also a villain, but like. But the, no, what was the thing too? Okay. So when she reveals that she has no teeth. Yeah. She has no front teeth. Right. So you said to me yes. that you watched a – What did you, you You told me something funny, yeah. and I told you I had my theory about it. But. Right. Well, the, this I, – I don't know why, but I, I started watching the Tilda Swinton interview, and I was curious after I discovered, like, the same guy who made the prosthetic teeth for yeah. Freddie Mercury. And I was like, why the, why the fuck did they even bother putting – fake teeth on her. What, yeah. why, what point did that have? And in an interview, Tilda Swinton was talking and the director was right next to her and she said there was absolutely no reason for that at all that the director just thought it would be funny. Right. And there was no reason. And they ran it by American audiences. <laughs> and no other... I mean, they probably only ran it by a few times. But in America, people thought that the scene where Tilda Swinton took out her teeth was supposed to indicate that she was offering oral sex to Curtis, to Captain America. <laughs> and I did not see that hey, at all. If you guys want to have ancient one Captain America fan right. fiction, yes. this is your moment, guys. Slash, dot, whatever. Yeah. Um, I didn't, look, I didn't pick up spot. on that at all. And um, I pick up on stuff shipping. like that. That's a, that's yeah, a oh, yeah, shipping. Yeah. I hate, I don't know well, what that is. I pick up on that as much as, Probably a little more than the average person. Like, if there's this weird sexual... I, the way like, I saw it was that the false teeth represented the crack in the tr- that the train... Like, she's supposed to be, like, okay. an elite on the train. Right. She's part of keeping the train going. Um, and that the teeth not being there represented the crack in the system. That okay. This train, the glitch in the Matrix. Well, not a glitch. More of just, like... Things aren't perfect. This train, it's like, it's running on rusted nails. It's running yeah. on like, so it's like you have false teeth. You lost your teeth already. And right. You're wearing something fake to cover up, but See, it, it doesn't do the same. It's not as good as the original teeth. Yeah. It, I saw it as like a, a, it's a lie too. It's a lie. Yeah. They're not real. They're. I saw it as a submissive gesture, like possibly that. You know, too. Um, yeah. here I am. I like weak in defense. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't. I, I, I watched it because I, I read. I, I watched the first half of the movie, and then I, I saw that YouTube video, and then I went and rewatched that part. I was like, I'm going to see if there's any conceivable way this could be construed as sexual and there just wasn't. I mean, in my own opinion. Yeah, who, I'm sorry, I would never watch that scene and went, oh yeah. Yeah, right? Oh well, yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, just, I guess it could be looked that way, but it's, I, I was, get that, it. I, was, I don't know, Watch took it out and like you said, it's probably what the director said. I just thought it was funny. He, yeah. And it's like, there's no, like, I'm reading into it like, oh, this represents the crack of the system well, of government. You know? I, yeah, I, I, 
don't remember. I, I remember not being real clear on this. I think Tilda Swinton said that she wears dentures. I don't know if that's true or not, but that she wears dentures and she took them out in real life, in real life while she was eating. And the director thought it would be funny to incorporate something like that into the film. I'm a little unclear on that because I only watched that part of the video. So the sweat, and if you're listening to this, yeah, you right. you're don't sue us. We're not saying you have fake teeth. No, look, she's amazing. I, I like her and everything. You know what? I, wasn't did you? <laughs> so I make that clear. Did you ever see that movie Orlando? I never. Okay, so no, I heard of it. That was I her, seen right? Clips of it. Yeah, it's yeah, like one yeah. of her first movies, right? right? I saw that in the theater. She was just on an episode. You ever watch uh, What We Do in the Shadows? Yeah. This is a yeah. TV show. Right. It's really funny. I watched the movie and okay. I've seen like clips of the TV show. I've not watched I it. I highly recommend the TV show. But they had a weird episode last week where they get, meet the council. Of Something yes. happens. They meet the and council. Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes there. Yes. Great. He's basically, right. he's on Skype. Yeah. And he's a day walker. Right. The joke is he's Blade. I mean, yeah. It's like, and they got the original guys from the movie there. So yes. Jermaine from, uh, uh, Fly the Conqueror, okay, and yeah, the yeah. director, and, and Korg right, of right. Uh, Thor Ragnarok's there, yes. and uh, the other guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, and until the Swinton's like the leader. Right. Because she played a vampire. So, what did she play a vampire? I want to say, see, yeah, what wasn't she in that Jim Jarmusch movie? Like, yeah. What we not, there, uh, yeah, yeah. Everybody only there, left alive. everybody was there was a vampire in that right. movie. Because. Um, what's her face? Uh, Evan Rachel Wood was on uh, True Blood. Oh yeah, yeah. And then I swear there was someone else. That was there was famous. like four or five. Oh, they mentioned uh, Robert Patterson, and Keith or Sutherland. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. They say Robert right. Keith, and he's like they were saying like Keith had nothing better to do or something. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Tilda. Well, anyway, in Orlando, Tilda Swinton was. That's weird because she the first half of the movie she played a. Well, Orlando is a I guess a famous story. Yep. I, I know more about Orlando because I read League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh yeah, okay, and yeah. Orlando is a one of the main characters later on in the series, right? And it's like uh, it's this character that is immortal. Immor- yes. and it and keeps changing sex. Yes, it's like at some point in the film, it was a he. Up until halfway through the movie, and then it was real crazy. The, the, he went to bed and woke up a woman, and that was it. And they but never really do they say it. that the character is uh, immortal? No, but you intuit that because I think this takes place in like the 17th century. But does it jump years? Yes, at the end, it's in modern day New York or something. Oh, I don't know. She's this. watching a motorcycle. And there's a great Jimmy Somerville from the Communards and Bronsky Beat <laughs> plays an angel. Again, another funny name yes. from the 80s of so, the song. The Communards. Yeah. So, yeah, so <laughs> it's like a very serious movie, but then like. Literally, like on a string, Jimmy Somerville comes down and dressed like a cherub and starts singing like communard songs or something. It's, it's a very. I don't know if I want to see this now. This it's, sounds stupid. I remember it as being very good. Uh, it came out, actually, probably came out around the. Do you ever see. Um, me have to talk about Kevin. Oh, yeah, and I read the book. That's terrible. Okay, how, I have how, a how did we get to this? Well, until the Swinton's in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she's right. the mom. Yes. Okay, so that movie, I remember when it was first announced, it stars Ezra Miller. It's like his first movie. He's in okay. The Flash and Justice League, and he's also in the those uh, Fantastic Beast movies. He's in the, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. The, I don't know if he's... In, I didn't see the second one, so I just know he's like kind of the abused one with the short sure. haircut, and he's like I never super, saw those, super powerful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's, he's in it, and... He, it's supposed to be like it takes place now and then like flashbacks and you find out right. about this kid and it's it, the story is about like uh, somebody that sh- shoots up a school. Yes. But yes. he doesn't shoot up a school. I always hate, I hated this part about the movie. Did, now, you said you read the book? I read the book. Does he use a bow and arrow? He crossbowed him. Yeah. Okay. I hate that. I, I'm like, I'm like, it bothers me. What, why the why does that bother you? Because I feel like it's almost like a, a, it makes it fantastical. Oh and yeah, it, it, like I mean, has that happened? To have people cross each? I don't. I, it, like, has a guy done gone in? And used, like, I'm. I was like almost like, is this something like last minute? But like, I mean, it looks more artsy to have him use sure, a crossbow, sure. and he uses a crossbow to kill his sister and his I, dad, but to go in and. Like I, I was like, is this like were they just pressured not to use guns? I, I was don't, like, 
I don't remember that's not that. That's what happens. If they, uh, this is an idiot goes in and shoots up the yeah. school. I mean, like, this isn't like fantasy that happens every right. fucking week now. Well, yeah, uh, it does. Well, I, I, it bothered It ruined the movie for me because I was like, I now I that you're the, saying I thought that, the message got ruined. I'm like, I'd have to go back and look at. I'd have to make sure that I it was a crossbow in the book. I'm pretty sure it was. But in the book, like, it wasn't really a statement about school shootings. It was a statement about, like, basically, like, did the mom fail the kid? You well, know what I mean? Well, the kid's like, kind of fucked up to begin with. The yeah. kid, like, uh, from the get-go, they hint, make hints that maybe he's autistic because he, like, develops really slow. Yeah. But he's not. He's, he's not. not. And he's, like, but... He, He's almost like kind of evil. He's like fucking with her, like a Damien type of kid. Yeah, kind like, of, yeah. Because like he's still like eight or something, and he's like still needs to have his diaper. Like he won't. Like she's right. trying to get him to go to the bathroom, and she ends up like breaking his arm or something. By yes. accident. Yeah. It's, right. And there's that famous scene in the movie where she's like strolling him. Yeah. And he's crying and she just like covers her ears like she can't deal with it anymore. She and then there's like a scene later in the movie when he's older now. Yeah. And she kinda of deals with him and you get to see like she says like nasty things about people. Yeah. And I don't know, I mean it's a little ridiculous. Like, right, I yeah. get it, but I, I the crossbow thing just annoyed me because I was just like I I'm not it makes it, it makes to it, it fantastical to me. It's like it that's well, not, it was more like because the the book, if I remember, it wasn't a comment about school shootings, or it was a comment more about families and mothers and stuff, and like that made it much more personal and visceral. And the kid, like the Kevin, he yeah. didn't want to shoot up a school; he wanted to kill his family. You know, he did, he didn't mean to like he wasn't a Klebold whatever that was going to shoot up like a bunch of people. He wanted to like ex- exact. Pain, extract pain. Well, he from kills his, his dad and he kills his sister. Yeah, he, she comes. Well, home he and blinded sees that. his sister. Earlier. He blinds his yeah. sister earlier. One of her eyes. Right. I don't know in the book, but in one of the eyes is like she basically he does something to her and she loses an eye. Yeah. And it's clearly his fault. Right. Like, there's no defending it. No. And then, yeah, then he does kill. She comes home and because you don't know what happened to the husband, you don't right, you right. see it and you realize like she was all by herself. Yeah. In the Minnesota state, but. I just felt I don't know I, I guess yeah, I, no, I can see this movie that. I just felt like it was a cop out it's like it's like trying to play it safe it's like we're going to do this powerful thing that's going on every, yeah. every uh, that is protein today but we're going to cop out and we're going to fail right. you know it's like I think the school shootings kind of like after Sandy I don't I would love to know if this book was written before or after well, Sandy Well the movie Hook. came out I think it it came out after. It right? came out after, yeah. I, mean, I wonder if the book was written before Sandy Hook. Probably. There was like Columbine was obviously a big game changer, but there was a lull. Not that it was people were still shooting up schools, but between Columbine, it wasn't until Sandy Hook. It, well, the real I think it started to get real crazy was when that congresswoman got shot in Arizona. Yeah, uh, he, like, he killed a whole bunch of other people. Uh, Gabbard. And then the movie theater happened. Yes, in Denver. Right. And then Sandy Hook happened. There was just yeah. like these three insane massacres that happened. Right. And then you start getting like the Pulse name. Yeah, and the Parkland. Va- the craziest and, yeah. one of them all to this day is uh, well, they were hard. I mean, Parkland. The Vegas one. Oh, yeah. I was in Vegas not too long ago and we drove by where that happened and I was talking to the Uber driver and she said that they, they were at the concert. That that was that, and they had left much earlier. Oh, like, God, you know, they, well, you know, it's like well, talk about like yeah, serendipity or something. Early. But she was talking about how this whole city was shut down, and yeah, I mean, just to, I mean, that's unimaginable. I was staring at the place where that happened, and I couldn't even get like a good. I just didn't. You know. I, I know, that's why the movie bothered me. I was just like, I know we're off track. Yeah, <laughs> nice. We're gonna wrap this up soon, but I yeah, just yeah. found the movie to be like. You know, it's like ignoring a basic fact. Right. Like, who who are you protecting here? Yeah, like, I'm going to... Kids are getting killed by guns. I mean, like... I'm going to defend we, the movie and say that, that it was... The movie was about something else. And, and the school shooting part was just a... It was... But the problem is the marketing was about... Yeah. It. Being the mom... I remember hearing about this movie. It wasn't like, oh, this mom's... This is a movie about a mom that's not capable of taking care of his crazy kid. Yeah. It was, to me, how it was marketed... Was this is about a 
what it's like to be the mother of right. a child that shoots up or kills a bunch of kids in his school. I think, yeah, I and think that's how it was marketed. That perspective, you're probably much, uh, you're, you're right. Cause my, I read the book first and I don't know how I read, so. it was, it was, it was like, yeah, that was a big part of it, but it was almost like saying like, it was a supporting detail, not the main idea. Yeah. You know, the school shooting part was like, Oh, this is also a consequence of all these other things. And so that never really bothered me because it, it made sense from the way. I, I guess. But yeah. like I said, so I thought it was just kind of oh, yeah. And that's why I asked because I'm like, was that always the intention? And you said you wrote the book, so if you did use it, yeah. then fine, whatever. Yeah, I'm like, pretty sure. I'm probably going to look it up later. It was torn archery and it was like away from play. I, okay, move yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, let's, let's wrap up Snowpiercer. The one, I guess the big question I have... Tell us when has been a lot of the movies. <laughs> well, I'll tell you that I... I um, yeah, I I loved Snowpiercer. I think the biggest... I could talk about the class aspect of it all day. I don't know why it's not more popular. I always think it's like... It should be listed as one of the... Not saying it's the best film ever. It's not. But, like, there's movies that, like are like almost perfect films in like the way they're paced. Yep. The way the characters, the acting. Robocop yeah. is a great example. The first yep, one. Yep. Not yep. the other crap. The original Robocop. Like where they're not like three hours long. They don't need to be in any no. and it and it, you're immersed in like a world. Everything's there. Everything's given to you. Yep. It's a complete story. Yep. And Snowpiercer to me is like one of those. I think it's a little odder, so I think it might turn off some people. It's weird, yeah. It, it's a little strange. Like I said, like when the guy's gurgling blood, it's sure. like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not. <laughs> right. Uh, but then again, Robocop had like those crazy scenes with the commercials and the comedy with the. Yeah. the Freaking toxic waste man, and like, but this clearly should have been an I, A-list big blockbuster. Like I said, I heard Har- Harvey Weinstein supposedly fucked it up. Like yeah. he, they want, to, and I don't know what version we're watching, but supposedly they ed- they did a weird edit to it. Okay, and they basically killed it. They killed like, and he's been he was known to be notorious for killing right. foreign movies because he had like Miramax and all those other companies. Yeah, yeah. And his whole thing was distribution, art house movies, and foreign, bring foreign films sure. to the United States. And he was known for kind of murdering movies. Well, uh, and I think Star Pierce was one of those. It mu- it must something happened because, just like you said, the cast, the script, the acting, the dialogue, the pretty much. Everything worked so well. Right. I love it's the, A-list stars yeah. in that movie, I, and and they were at the time. I mean, Chris Evans wasn't. He was already in Captain America. He was in Avengers when that came out. Yeah, he was yeah. already in Avengers. And Phil Swinton was in tons of movies. John, John Hurt and, and, and Harris. And Harris. Yeah. So David Spencer was on the weird show on Comedy Central. Right, right. Well, <laughs> yeah, but um, and it's so good, and it holds up well, and I'll bet you it holds up well for a long time because it's intentionally. <laughs> supposed to look the way it looks. Right. I mean, know? yeah, is there any deep... I wouldn't say there's any real wonky CGI or anything like that. I don't remember. Maybe the outdoor stuff's a little... Yeah, yes. Yeah, when fine. they go past the frozen city... That looks cool. It looks fine. It looks like you know? fantasy. What the fuck is supposed... I always hate when people say things like, yeah, this looks fake. This looks right. bad. I'm like... Yeah. What the fuck yeah. is... I mean, like, bad... There's bad CGI. Right, like, right. When we talk about, like, Scorpion King. Yeah. Like, so, no, this looks know, fine. Uh, they use it sparingly. Yeah. There's and then there's like I don't know. Um It wouldn't surprise me. There was supposed to be a TV series. I don't know what happened to it. Oh, really? Connolly was like listed as one oh, of the wow. actresses. I don't know if they filmed the pilot, but they announced the TV series. Now I don't know. Do you think speaking of yeah, sustaining, yeah. I think this would be about the beginning. Yeah. I can almost imagine how the first season would play out. Right. It's like everyone's on the train in the end. Yeah. Right, and the last scene is everyone's like, oh my god, go on an adventure. Right. No, no. But, like, could that sustain a series? I don't know if that would be well, something I want to watch as a series. I'm like, the no, but works you know, great. And you know what? Did you ever see the, the 100, that TV show? I never watched that. I love that. I haven't seen all. I, I stopped all that. You like, CW stuff. It's so good, though. I mean, if you, like, anyone's ever going to run out of shit to watch these days. But if you ever find yourself, like, with... Give that the first season is amazing. Really, it's really funny because I think it came out around the same time as that, like 
terrible, like, there's a Will Smith, uh, Jaden Smith movie where the world's ended. Yes. And I think it came out around the same time. That, right. Because like, it's supposed to be, like, Earth is dead or something yes, like that. Yeah. And, like... They've been living on a space station, and the Earth has been annihilated, yeah. nuclear war or whatever, and, but the space station is falling apart, so they, and they have to go back to Earth. Yeah. So the, the idea of the 100 is they send 100 juvenile delinquent criminals back to Earth to test it, <laughs> you know? Uh, and as it turns right. out, the Earth is pretty much fine, and they start a new society, like a Lord of the Forest. were there people already living there, too? There that? were, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like a little bit, it's like a good mix of like the, of Lost, the TV show yeah. Lost, and um, some classic CW teen soap drama. Yeah. You know what I watched, uh, and I, man, I don't know if it's going to work. You ever watch, uh, we're going to wrap this up, but, yeah, yeah. Um, crap, The Purge. I, I saw the first one, yeah. Okay. First one's like really like a home invasion movie. Sure, yeah. And you're being introduced to things. And then the second one's like more about the world. And they right. just get dumber as they go along. But they made a TV series. Oh, okay. And I yeah. was like really looking forward to it. And I watched it, but it ended up just being like a 10 hour movie. Purge. <laughs> yeah, because like I thought it was going to yeah. be about like what it's like to live. I mean, they go into more details what sure. society's like and everything. But. The way it, in the end, yeah, it was just a long ass yeah. purge movie. And I was like, I was like, what's the point? Right. I think if you're gonna do something like that, it'd be kind of interesting. It must be like, you don't have. You, like, I I would find it interesting. What's it like to live in a society where yeah, you have one purge day? But guess what? Everything revolves around that purge day. Yeah. Everything leading up to purge day. Everything leading. It's like how people like they would show people like cosplaying. Right. Right. It's like how people like treat like San Diego Comic Con like this is their big day where people treat Christmas it's like yeah, people yeah. have would have generated economies around this right they would like be everything selling like, strategies and yeah. safe houses yeah, and like weapons your and, whole livelihood's based on this yeah. one day and I thought the TV show would go into that more and it didn't, no it was just a long yeah. purge well I don't, look I don't know <laughs> if Snowpiercer could sustain I, it could it would be um, I think that's the thing is like Snowpiercer is so perfect the way it is it's it moves quickly because you're introduced to each cart every te- it's almost like 10 minute segments yeah. and every 10 minutes you get a new cart it could and have been you, yeah like a love death and robots series of 10 minute little short films right I don't I don't know if I, a, a series yeah. you know unless they do like it's like one of those series like almost like you know Lost was like all flashbacks right right it was half flashbacks half and oh so yeah I could I would see that imagine, that would be the only way I could see that working. Yeah. it's like if you do something and the plot moving and you, you get introduced to the character right. and you see what it's like to live on what their world was like before they were on the right. train yeah, I would hey guys that. I think we're writing the Snowpiercer hit us up if we find out that Fuckers. pilot Fuckers. shows up and you steal our idea that steals from Lost I'm gonna grab my night vision and hatch it and, yep. <laughs> and my fish and my the, fish Get my net, my axe on it. Yeah, and then we're gonna go to town. Right. Well, okay. Look, so we'll wrap it up. I, you gotta watch Snowpiercer. It's on Netflix, Netflix right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean it's it's so good. I can't think of too many people that wouldn't at least find something to like about. Unless it. you don't like things. Right. You don't like things. I'm the hell with you. Yeah. <laughs> go. Clearly, you don't like things. <laughs> That's what I tell people. If you don't like it. Well, clearly, you don't like anything. Nah. Uh, okay. All right. So, I think next week. We're going to discuss... Gump? No. Okay. <laughs> Close. Oh, That's yeah. No, we talked about this. Next week... Gump of Thrones. Gump. We're going to talk about... Yeah, because... But the... So, we're going to talk about the last season of Game of Thrones. So, yes. the next... There's one episode left, guys. So right. We're, we're in a time caps right now. And when we post this... We're going to post this... The episode this. is... Well, we'll post it the night of the last episode. Yeah. This episode now. Right. So, we're going to wait to the last episode. Yeah. See Watch what it. happens, and then we're going to talk about it. But, Spoil the living hell. Well, everybody right. already knows yeah, at this yeah. point. It doesn't even matter. Right. I, I feel like, yeah, you're going to spoil it, but... All right. So we're going to get together. We'll talk Game of Game of Thrones. Season 8. Yeah. I, know, I mean, we could talk about Game of Thrones in general. Sure. We'll, we'll give some context. We're going to talk about a specific episode. No, we'll talk, talk about, about the, the ending of yeah, Game of Thrones. Did you read the books? I, I've read all the books. Yeah. I didn't read the books. I, look, the books are amazing. Um, we can talk about that too a little bit. I, I don't okay. like if someone said like the conversation I would have with someone about Game of Thrones 
wouldn't be any different if they read the book versus just saw the shows. Okay. Uh, there's there's clearly some differences, but substantively, there's very little, you know. Uh, and also now, like, the, the books only go... There's only, like, five books. They There's two that were supposed to come out and never came out. Yeah. Right? Uh, the Wind of... Oh, we'll get it. You know what? Why don't we save that for the next podcast? Yeah. All right. All right. So, I'm Rob, uh, I'm, blah, blah. I'm Rob Israel. I'm Joseph K. And you still going on about... That. Later. Thank you for listening to You Still Going On About That with myself, Rob Israel, and Joseph K. Remember, you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, Google Play, CastBox, and Podbean. So remember to like and subscribe, share, comment, leave us a basket of fruit or candy. Um, Thank you for listening. All right, later. Bye.